I think I'm live. Hello, people. I think Rod's going to join me in a minute. Uh, let me just see if he's seeing the message. He's making a brew. Let me sort out some light. Um, I'm sitting here listening, so I thought I'd see if anyone else is out there with nothing better to do than join me. Hi, Donna. Thank you, Nick. I was just running out of stuff to watch. I'm wide awake and ready to play it. Ready to play out? Well, you are very welcome. Oh, I've got a few people in. Hello, Popcorn popcorn coin King. Kern Jan Admiral. Why are we all still awake? Well, it's only half 11, to be fair. It's not late yet. Don't think I've seen a stream so late. No, Andrew's not asleep yet. She's not gone to bed yet. She won't be joining me. She will be going to bed shortly. Rach is in. Josh. Wow, lots of people. So I am actually going to attempt to list. I've been, li I'll show you what I've been listing. I've been plowing through that um, big hall of media and listing soundtracks and they can be lucrative so there is robocop for example these are the prices when i did my research i tend to do research in a batch and then go through them and list them all so this is what i'm aiming for 20 on that one uh the running man these are the original issues which makes a difference 30 quid Conan the Destroyer, 25. I'm assuming you can see and hear me. Looks like it. Can you, can you see and hear me? <laughs> is this working? I think it is. Can someone confirm? Yes. Okay, good. Um, oh, this is an interesting one. The Serpent and the Rainbow. There's some good horror stuff in here, £25. This label, uh, Varice Sarabandi, they seem to have... Ah, here comes Rod. Hello. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I was late. I was, I was making a coffee. That's all right. I was just sharing with uh, with people. We've got we've got eighty four people with nothing better to do than watch us mess about. Dawn of the Dead. I've just shown some of the figures. Well, this is what I'm aiming for. I'll probably yeah. take offers on a lot of these, but yeah, they're great. I sold a few already. Not these ones that are listed tonight. But <laughs> the Abyss. I'm going for yeah. 15, well, fourteen. Some of them, as I was showing you earlier, aren't so great. Apocalypse Now. I've gone for three or four quid. The Iron Man, a fiver. Return of the Living Dead, two. 40. Really? <laughs> eBay well, will never never cease to amaze me, the sheer rubbish some people will buy. It's quality merchandise, I'll have you know. Just, I'm sorry, quality, quality merchandise. <laughs> yes, I sell a lot of probably the previous. <laughs> If you sell the quality merchandise, I'll probably sell the uh, the rest of it. It is freezing here this morning. Absolutely freezing. It's ridiculous. And hence, you've got Santa's hat on then. Yeah, well, I was telling you earlier, I, I we went to Lapland in 2008. We took the kids when there was about, I don't know, four or four and six or five and seven i can't remember now and um yeah we went to stay at santa claus village in rovanimi absolutely wonderful place and uh, i bought this hat all the way from lapland but i needed it i needed a hat this morning it's so cold because i had a haircut yesterday and i'm kind of bald oh let's have a look <laughs> You've got more hair down here then. Oh, yeah, blimey. Yeah, she went a bit close. I'll leave it off now. It's a bit warm my ears up. It's a bit 
close to the wood. Well, I'm I came gonna... home yesterday. I, I came home yesterday, and Trish said I look like Topo. So I think I'm going to have to do something soon. But it, it's got to stay till Christmas. I've got to one thing. One thing I've got to prove to myself I can do. See, the, the conspiracy theories that you are actually Santa will run rife now. You've got to keep it on till Christmas, right? <laughs> well, who knows what kind of musical treat you're all in for at Christmas. Well, I don't know if you saw Ad. Ad was a bit aid, so he was a, was a big fan of your hat. And then oh, Lainey yeah. thinks uh, thinks you're Jesus. No, there you go. Uh, I do perform miracles on a daily basis, yeah. Well, some of the media you've been selling, I think, is my <laughs> What was it? Brick patterns or something you shared with me? Oh, um, was it? Yeah, where's it gone? Yeah, so I, how to how to lay bricks? <laughs> you just put them on the ground, don't you, and throw cement on? Huh. Someone wanted to pay me twelve dollars for a DVD on how to do it, so I'm not complaining. Ah, Ken's in. I have a massive weekend of lockdown listing. Ah, Ken's on lockdown. Uh, yeah. For the weekend, my goal is 2,000 DVDs between now and Sunday. Holy cow, Ken. Well, it, it, Ken Ken really can't go anywhere, really. So he's, he's complete. I think he's under martial arrest or whatever they call it in Victoria. He, literally, I think they can go out once a day and that is it. Have they so, had a lot, a lot of cases then in that area, have they? Uh, I believe so. I'm not... I'm. I'm I'm pretty ignorant of it to be truthful, and, and that's that's shameful on my part, really. But I don't watch the news. Um, it's just always doom and gloom on news, isn't it? And you know, there should be a happy news channel. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps that's your next uh, YouTube venture, the Happy News cha Channel, <laughs> with, I, with Santa Claus. Really. really? <laughs> This no. moaning old sod would not be good enough for that. Show. I know. I, I was just thinking through that as I said it. Normally, you're, you're whinging about something. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I don't think Ken will list 2,000, though. I think he's a bit... You might as well aim high. I. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I've got another 15-odd to do tonight, and then I'm quite happy. Well, I've, last night, I, I've been having a few late nights. I was... Um, in the the shed till about I think half past ten last night, eleven o'clock the other night, just basically um trying to bang as many listings as I can on. Um <coughs> so my managed payment switched over on Monday. Mm. And the two days I got a message two days before saying it was going to switch over. And literally, it was like someone just turned my eBay off. It, it, I had no sales at all from probably getting that email till about Monday night. And then I got a couple. Um, and then yesterday, I got a notification that the money was going to be transferred over. So it'd be like three to four days, they said. But there was being, you know, not optimistic, what's the word? They were giving That's, themselves a good buffer. Yeah. Um, but that was yesterday, and today the um, the payment came in. So mine set to a, a rolling daily payout basis. I think I might switch it to a weekly, um, mainly because before I used to just print out a PayPal invoice for my tax, which said how much had come in. Now it's coming in from here there and everywhere so there's going to be a lot of daily inputs hope of money into my bank account from ebay so i think i might change it to weekly because i had a notification today that there would be some being put in tomorrow hmm. so it's now it's kick-started i think as long as you get regular sales every day you are going to have that rolling daily inputs of money from ebay i don't think it's going to be as big a drama as hopefully what people had anticipated give ebay a chance to mess it up rod i'm sure they're capable well, yeah uh, I I, we've not switched over yet as far as i'm aware so i've got all of that joy to come well, well i had a notification this morning that 
one of my other stores has now been activated for managed payments. So, yeah. So, I'm, and I'm pretty sure now that store is going to tank for a few days. Um, I'd just say anyone in the chat, be prepared. What's the challenge accepted, Ken? What, what, I'm not, I'm not, what challenge? <laughs> He's going to do his 2,000 now. You said he probably oh. won't. I, I tell you what, this, I don't know if Ken's anything like me. If someone tells me you can't do that, you you can be <laughs> damn sure I will, right? That's what I need. There's nothing more motivating. I muddle along and do my thing, right? If somebody tells me, Nick, you're an idiot, you haven't got enough stuff listed, you cannot get your backlog. I just want someone to tell me that, right? And I'll be like all yeah. over it. Um, but well, then again, I'd work good. myself to the ground to do it as well. You know, I'd, I'd really wear myself out. Well, Look at look at you now. I mean, what time is it over there? Quarter to twelve-ish, is it? Or eleven? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I've done very little all day, <laughs> apart from oh. packaging. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was still activity within your business. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you work hard for it. So you know, if you work hard, you should be rewarded. You know? But there is there is something um, you know that triggers a lot of people if they're told you can't do that. It, it is yeah. the most motivational thing. Someone's saying, no, you can't. Yeah. You'll well, never I'm... you'll never do that. You'll never sell that brick patterns DVD, whatever it was, how to make a brick wall. <laughs> I'm still stuck with this Songs of Galapagos walruses. Though. I mean, I'm pretty surprised because it is sealed. You know, it's brand new. Hey, John, I was going to hit the <laughs> hay, but we'll list electronics while listening shamed me why we did we're not shaming anyone into listening look I, I've, I've been looking at this cd since we started i should actually list it i've run out of soundtracks that's the annoying thing the rest of it's kind of crap really so was this 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 part of a, a bigger haul from the weekend i've not seen all your videos this week i've been a little bit i've i've not shared the stuff from the weekend that will be oh. coming on sunday but last okay. week we went to two jumble trails and filled the car twice. This is from the the twenty p media hall where I bought hundreds and hundreds at twenty p each. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So I'm sc scrolling up. Uh, uh, is right. my stream cutting out? There seems to be people saying yeah. streams are cut. People are having issues. There's nothing I can do about it if they're having mm. issues. As, you know. I just thought I saw oh, Neville. Neville lives over. Hi, Neville. Not seen you in chat. Mind you, I've not been on for a while, so that's probably why. <laughs> hey, Laney. Laney. It's fine for Laney. I think it's... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> don't ask <Yeah>. me. <laughs> All right. Okay. I can't solve it. If, if there are issues, I apologise. There's a, there's a comment here from the reseller kid. Now, I... I, I sent you a message the other day about this this lad didn't i and i was mm -hmm. watching his um i subscribed to him a few months or maybe a few weeks ago um yeah i've been really liking his car boot videos you know he's i don't know how old he is um but he's very enthusiastic he's got a lot of you know, it seems like he's got a lot more get up and go than most kids I know of that age. And good luck to him. You know, he's uh, yeah, yep. I, yeah. So keep it up. I was give him a little shout out. <laughs> yeah, I do. You know, I've got a lot of time for for teenagers who have got that that get up and go mentality. Mm. You know, nothing comes yeah. for free. You've got to work for it because there are too many i'm going to sound like a moany old man now but there are way too many freeloading teenagers out there <laughs> who need to yes. uh, light a fire yeah. underneath themselves but that's probably our generation's fault because we've given them all on a plate They've never said it. anyway well. there's, a, there's a lot to be said <laughs> for it i'm yeah well i'm in that situation with my daughter i don't want to make life hard for her but i want her to to appreciate where the money mm. comes from and how value mm. you know you have to earn it and I, I don't like buying her everything she goes to a lot of concerts and these days i'm like well good luck paying for it then you better get a job because i'm not yeah. paying for a gig in anymore she's now 18 yeah when i turned 16 i had to buy all of my own stuff and if i wanted to go to a gig i'd have to save up yeah 
So it's tough love, I think. It is, but they'll, they'll appreciate it hopefully later. <laughs> well, maybe one day. <laughs> I know my, loves, my lads love me for it, not. I can imagine. <laughs> I've just had a photo off Ken. Oh, my God. He's, he's got a, it looks like a, you know, like a pasting table, wallpaper pasting table. Yeah. And it's just stacked full of DVDs. Oh, my God. Wow. Has he been sourcing a lot again then, or is this just the back, the endless backlog? Well, I'm, I'm not sure because and it, Ken has been buying for mo weeks, if not months, just seems to be picking up an awful lot of job, lots of various things, you know. Um, yeah. Fine with these um, listing hangouts. I don't tend to list, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break that habit and actually list while I'm on here. So if I go well, I, I was going to actually pack um, a few of my um, DVD. Oh, yeah. well, share with us what, what's gone out. Well, the, the problem is I can't pack them because I, I don't like using a tape gun. It's probably well documented I don't like tape guns. Um, I prefer the old-fashioned teeth. But I've had to change over to scissors recently, well, in the last few months, um, as I had an unfortunate incident trying to remove half a roll of sellotape off my face. Um, <laughs> First world problems. <laughs> well, this is true. Um, no, I went to bite some of the sellotape, and obviously it's sticky and facial hair, and it, you know, you, you join the dots. It just got very... It, I, I can only imagine what women go through waxing, and it, it wasn't good. So, but um, I find that the the opening of sellotape I, it seems to amplify through a microphone, um, and I, I can't stand watching packing videos when somebody's obviously packing and doing doing the sellotape because the noise is just so annoying. So I won't pack today. Okay. Well, you can show us what's going out, though. There's not a lot, to be honest. Um, like I say, it's really kind of died. I mean, um, a while ago, I got a, a um, job lot. Of, um, I moved off the bed. Oh, sorry. That was that. She, Andrea waving from the office door. She's off to bed. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, a while ago I got a job. A lot of this, this, this woman, her, her dad died, and um, she, she was left to clear the house out. And there was five hundred thereabouts CDs and one hundred and fifty vinyl albums. Um, and anyway, I bought a lot off her for four hundred dollars, and there's some real gems in there. And there's been some, some song, some CDs which you look at and you think, "Who the hell is going to want to buy this?" And they're they're going out quicker than the ones you would think would sell. Yeah, it's always the um, and such obscure titles and bands. It's you know strange, um, but obviously with with her father being the age he was. The music taste isn't, you know, it's, it's not E17, let's put it that way. Um, so there's a lot of old timer stuff, but it surprisingly still sells. Now, I sold this the other day, and I've only just got around to shipping it. I mean, who people are going to laugh and say, are you wasting your time for that amount of money and what have you? But, but it's so easy to list, so easy to just one, you know, quick photo on it, and it's on. And it, it kind of gives your account activity if people are, you know, mooching through. Anyway, that's my reasoning. Judy Garland. Oh, yeah. Who, who buys a blooming Judy Garland CD? Lots of people. 
Well, obviously, someone in Victoria has decided they want to get into the top two. Some, of somewhere over the rainbow. Is that on it? Probably. It's the only one I know of hers. Yeah, over the rainbow. There you go. And such classics as the trolley song. Is that the one with clang, clang, clang on the trolley? Ding, ding, ding. It was on an advert in the UK when I was over there. It for sounds a familiar. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's one. Oh, Sue was in. Hi, oh, Sue's gone. <laughs> Hi, Sue. Bye, Sue. Missed you, Sue. <laughs> oh, Matthew's got Judy Garland listed. No one's bought his. Oh, dear. I must have conned the Judy Garland market then. Right. There you can go. I, How's can the I DIY brickwork? Oh, yeah. That's the one you showed me. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And how much did it go for? $12.50 for that used. It's like, really? Excellent. Um, come on, Nick, sing the hits of Judy Garland. The fact that the only one I vaguely know is Somewhere Over the Rainbow <laughs> should tell you how much I know about Judy Garland. Wasn't Judy Garland Liza Minnelli's mum? Yes, she died on the toilet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she did. She she was. I think she was addicted to um, like Elvis did pills and things. You know, not not like ecstasy like and kind of things, but uh, painkillers, sleeping and and well, she must have had a hectic schedule or something. But um, yeah, she uh, she popped her clogs on the toilet. Yeah, that's the one place I don't want to go. Um. Would you have any tips for Tom about selling DVDs? He says, I find they're so cheap to buy on eBay, they cost more to ship than the DVD itself. You've got to be selective or yeah. do bundles. Um, gone are the days when a DVD has has some value and you can sell pretty much. You, you can still sell anything, but like you said, you're not going to get much more than the shipping costs you, so it's a waste of your time. Um, it's, it's not an easy to answer, really, is it? Obscure is good, or bundles of popular artists are good. I've been shifting yeah. tons of these in bundles. Um, I mean, you can if you go on, like you bought loads of job lots, and a few people have, I would imagine, in the chat. You, like, if I'd have gone to pick them 500 CDs up, I couldn't have spent time going, yes, yes, yes. yes. She wanted rid of the lot, so you've got to take the, 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 the bad with the good. Um, yeah. See, that's a that's a great way or a good example. Uh, hi, Louis says I bought two thousand five hundred DVDs on Monday. Picked out about three hundred and fifty that sell for four pound plus. Hence, you know, just about yeah. worth listing um, and beyond the good ones. You know, uh, including loads of box sets that sell for twenty five pound plus. So the the cream of it, right? List the cream of yeah. it, and then here you go. Um, Paid 110 all in, sold all the crap ones for 375. So you move you on. Yeah. And yeah. that's exactly how I tend to do it. Bundle up the crap or put the crap as a job lot on Facebook or on eBay itself or take it to a mm. boot sale. Just get rid. Yeah, perfect. I think with this virus as well, um, DVDs and CDs um, have just... You know, people are, you know, what they call, uh, what's the word? You know, they're, they're within their own home, they can't leave, etc. So they're online and they'll, they'll just, oh, we'll get a film out. Even though there's access to Netflix and all them kind of things. But, you know, some of the films people want to watch aren't actually on Netflix. I mean, I've sold some good series which aren't on Netflix. Um, you know, I, I've, I've compiled another list which is um, for, looking for films which are being pulled from netflix you know because of this racially or whatever um reasoning behind it yeah um so you know if you can get some good 
good box sets of, of films like that. It's like when they pulled Little Britain from, was it BBC pulled Little Britain? I sold the three together for $70. Two months before, I'd be lucky to get about 16 for the lot. You know, I suppose trying to see those market trends, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that was a flash in the pan. That's kind of leveled out again here now. Yeah. I've sold all the ones I picked up and managed to get 50. Did I share with you that I managed to ship out my uh, – I had Little Britain 1, 2, and 3 and – the red nose day special edition or something and i shipped them out but i left one in my disc repair machine and he left Ooh. negative feedback and i was like i wish you contacted me because it's here and i could have sent it out for you to you so obviously i'll send it now but are you happy to revise the feedback which he has which is great but yeah oh that's good but you paid 50 pounds for the lot and i bought them like two days before at the car boot sale for 50 pence each so it cost yeah. me two quid it, it, for 50 in 24 hours it's great it, it is that's I think that's the thing that keeps people who do this as they're living motivated more than anything else because finding something for that amount of money and then flipping it for the money you got, you know, God, that beats standing on a lathe any day of the week. You know, that's, that's, you know. Yeah. And there's, there's also a kind of thrill because it feels like you've, you've, magicked up money out of thin air it's kind of like way you know you don't get that thrill from being paid to do a a job this is yeah it feels like magic sometimes you know what i mean mean, doing a normal job nine to five the only the only thing you're able to sell is your time isn't it and you've only got so much of that during the day at least with this um it's 24 7 really you know, it's, uh, I mean, I, I wake up in the morning and I've, I've had sales. It puzzled me for a while. I'd go to bed sometimes at 12 o'clock and have no sales. And then wake up in the morning about half past five and there'd be a few sales. And I'm thinking, who's buying this in Australia at this time of the day in the, in the morning? Mm-hmm. But I keep forgetting Western Australia is four hours behind me. So when I went to bed at 12 o'clock, it's still eight o'clock for them. So they they're still actively looking you know um oh well oh, yeah, so Mel. Hi, Mel. four hours time difference from one side to the other well i'm i'm in uh queensland which is on the east coast and obviously western australia is over on the west and there's, yeah i think there's four hours i think mel's in the chat she'll correct me i'm damn sure she will if i'm wrong she does on most things hey mel what'd she say there i'm in a waiting room in a hospital. Wow, hope you're okay. Yeah, she's all right. It's just a. I'm not. I'm not saying what it is because it's none of my business. But yeah, she's okay. she's fine. As long she's as she's fine. fine. Good to see you, Mel. Um, people are having tech issues. If try refreshing if the audio is not syncing. That normally sorts it out. Yeah, Lane, it's still fine for Laney. <laughs> Laney's the only one who's watching it. Perfect. She's got a brand new laptop. <laughs> ah, I'm not sure that's even back from getting fixed because there was issues with it. All oh, right. Well, Josh says, nice to see Nick allowing Bill Oddie back on for a chat. I used to like Josh's channel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going through this whole Bill Oddie thing again. <laughs> oh tommy's in hello tommy hi tommy how are you oh uh, the app is playing up apparently if you're watching oh. one of that you might have problems right let's kick this listing off so you've Bill. got what are you you, you listing there soundtracks what's that you you've got soundtracks there is it I've just finished the soundtracks. I had a big stack of them, and they are lucrative. Not all of them like anything, but the yeah. the 80s uh, first edition, uh, Veris Sarabandi is a really good label. Um, yeah, great money in that. But now I'm on to the more bog-standard stuff. Nice <laughs> seal for the summer. I should get me six pounds. Brand new, six pounds. That gives you an idea how low. Who, who, sorry, who's who was the last one? 
What Donna Summer? No, the the one before that. Uh, I don't know, Welsh. Oh no, that's the record. The label is Varese Sarabandi. All uh, oh, right. <laughs> where is it? There. No. Right. Okay. Yeah. Ah, right. Okay. So that's the actual label. Yeah. Ah, sorry, I thought he was referring to the band. I thought. Oh, who, no, no, no. No. I've got a Donna Summer album over there from um, that vinyl lot I picked up. Um, yeah, I've not listed it yet. I don't know what it's worth. Probably nothing. The last time I was on with you, we mentioned about Discogs. Mm -hmm. um, and I was going to look into selling on Discogs, but I was messaged you earlier. I won't be bothering. It's a uh, number of reasons. Main one being, I think they, they are serious, serious collectors on there and one minor floor and to be on your back. Um, and plus, there doesn't seem to be much action in Australia for people on Discogs. So it might just be a dead duck for me. That So I just use it as a reference point more than anything else. Yeah, I've not taken the plunge with them. I did share didn't I, some of some of my epic vinyl pickup from the weekend. Yes, yeah. And I thought it worked out. What did I work it out to? Just over thirty pence an hour. <sighs> there was a, roughly a hundred and was hundred and five or hundred and fifteen. I think it's hundred and fifteen, maybe. That's crazy, isn't it? Paid forty two pounds. Was that a boot sale? 36. It was one of these jumble trail yard sale things. Uh, we, we went down to sort of west of London. Yeah. And um, yeah, rocked up at a stall and they had this box full of records or a couple of boxes full of records. S started chatting with them. Uh, she said, uh, I'll take a pound each now. This was late in the day. And I was like, okay, right, we're in. Hey, pound each. <laughs> and then got chatting with them. Apparently a dealer came and bought selected a bunch of them and took a big stack yeah. so i knew they'd been gone through by someone who was openly saying he was a dealer yeah. um but there was so much good stuff left there's no nothing that will make me a fortune but like i was saying to you i'll share a couple i am going to do a separate stream and go through it all i've not been through yeah. it yet but there's like early genesis stuff for example and the condition is like it's just like it's just come out of the record shop yeah, it, now they are originals, aren't they? Because there's a company over here called JB Hi-Fi, and I went in there a few weeks ago, and I saw in a, <coughs> excuse me, a sealed Peace of Mind Iron Maiden album. And I thought, my God! And I ran over and grabbed it and thought, I'm buying that. But the reissues. Yeah. Well, with the resurgence of vinyl, so much stuff's been reissued. Um, yeah. But you can tell in seconds because you just go to you just find the dates on them. Um, no, but these were all well, their records. I chatted with them for quite a while, and they were just music fans in the 70s uh, and 80s. And I said to them, Why are you selling it all off? And they said, We just don't play them. We've got them all yeah. on digital format now, we just don't want them. So yeah, so I bought the everything is, they had. I I they were a pound each. I picked out, I just kept picking them out and picking them out, and I got to about yeah. 20. And I just said to her, okay, how much for the lot? And she came back at um, 50 quid, I think. And then I, yeah. I, we had a couple of other bits of bits and bobs Andrea picked up. And I said, I, I could do you well, about 45 if you chuck in these few bits and bobs, which were priced up at three quid. And she yeah. just went for it. I was like, wow, okay. So I used to love, love back in the day buying an album. And you'd, you'd, you know, you'd sit it and just open it up and you know you don't get that nowadays plus you'd know the age with them with the the smell mm -hmm. um i don't do smells I, i'm not too keen on smell <laughs> certain <laughs> smells but old vintagey type of smells that are quite it's, it's a good indicator of their age isn't it if, if, if you're in an op shop and you I'll end, I'll end it there i'm not I'm not going down that road but you know what I mean? Yes, vintage items have a have a have a distinct smell. But oh yeah. dear, I think 
I, th I think Zane's what? must be listening to someone else in the first part of it. My wife doesn't say I'm very calm. She's but um, sleeping. <laughs> Oh dear. Sleeping podcasts. I wouldn't even know how to do one. <laughs> I'm I'm way behind in the chat. So I've just it's just yeah, right the end. So you've got soundtracks. All I've got here, I've got this this is just a little <laughs> bit of the um haul I got. Um I mean, it's all over there in about five or six boxes, but um these are uh, a relaxation and meditation CDs. And uh, these have been going pretty well. Um, and I was surprised. Um, I remember used to, in the UK, I used to walk around garden centres. And there'd be this station at some point in it where it'd have yeah. all these CDs yeah. stuck to the wall. And you, you, had a, you could select which one you wanted to listen to. Yeah, there'd always be whales so yeah. Sounds, sounds of the forest. Mm. All and that, yeah. and I, when I'd finished listening to them, I always used to leave the most annoying one going. Um, but <laughs> but um, that's what these are. They're, they're, they're that kind of media. And they've been going really well. And, I, and is it a sign of the times? Everyone's stressed out and they just want to perhaps chill out at night with the what's going on with the virus and finances and things like that. Um, yeah, they've been going really well. Um, some of them I thought would never have sold. There was one, it was something like Parrots of the Amazon. Now, the last thing I want to listen to trying to relax is a lot of parrots squawking their head off. But they went. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just it's strange. What, 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 what's up? And I'll tell you what else I've found in amongst this collection. They must have been the most... I don't know what's again what the word is, but readers digests most best customer. Mm -hmm. There's the amount of readers digest related media is unbelievable. Um, I think some yeah. of those can do well as well, though, if you get the right sets. They can. Um, opera ones, I've never really had any luck with, not as much luck as you with the opera. Um, don't go there. Don't. It's a sore point. <laughs> I'm, I'm still not quite over that. <laughs> oh, uh, let's have a look through these, see what I've got, see what rubbish I've acquired. Mm. I had a bit of a change around in my shed weekend trying to get it a bit more organized it feels more ergonomically right you know i've got i'm just on my chair i can spin around and get my stuff here do it there put it there before i was doing more laps of this shed than nigel mansell it was, it was crazy it was yeah so but i found in the last few days it's been quite quite a big help as well i feel i feel a bit more efficient i'm probably not but i feel like i am so that's a a yeah, bonus. There's a lot to be said for laying everything out in the mm. in the right way. I don't think I've nailed it yet in here at all. Um, but I was saying to well, you, now. I was saying to you that we're we're thinking about moving house, and and if we do, I'll, I'll quite enjoy setting everything up from the ground up again, you know, and really yes. planning it and getting it all right. Because so I've never yeah. quite nailed it. Well, you've had the years of experience of operating this business, so you've got all that behind you to put it out in a way you want, put it out instead yeah. of making do. You'd, you'd think I'd know um, what to do, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Mel, a good few months ago, Mel was horrified and probably still is at the state of my setup. Um, it's literally some points, it's like someone's just, took the roof off my shed and emptied the contents of a charity shop in it and then just nailed the roof back on and done one. Um, it is a bit higgledy-piggledy. But I've had to make room as well in here because we're buying a new ride-on mower. And uh, that's got to sit over there. So 
the last one we had blew up. Uh, it didn't help when Trish drove over the carpet with it. <laughs> um, it <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bought a mower. I bought a ride on mower, and, and because I put it in the shed, I thought, I don't want any oil leaks on the floor of the shed. So I, I found this old piece of carpet, and I put that down. I says, every time you ride over it, it, it it'll soak up the any oil that drops, you know. Well, it was a time I had to go back to the UK for my mother's funeral. And when I come back, she'd, she'd rolled up into the garage onto the carpet, but she still had the blade spinning round and ended up with like 30 foot of axe minster wrapped around the bottom of the lawnmower. And then all of a sudden the engine just went boom. And that was the end of that. So she's 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 buying she's buying the new ride and it's gonna it's gonna cost three thousand three thousand two hundred it's brand new husqvarna wow um so you know she she breaks it it's her money so. someone's asked you a question there do you want me to read it out while you're typing away yeah yeah, yeah if you can um, I'm, I'm way behind it's from Dalgleish94. No relation to Kenny, are you? Um, hi, Nick. How do you decide which cassette bundles to buy and which not? I often see large bundles of tapes, and I'm dying to take the plunge and buy a load. I like the, the old hi-fi stuff, but some only seem to be worth 10 pence. Um, if it's rock stuff... Mm that would be good rather than pop if it's yeah. if it's earlier if it's 80s rather than 90s but then again the stuff in the 90s rap stuff rap on cassette is now really collected is it yeah you can get silly money um price is the main thing if you're getting it cheap enough that the risk mm -hmm. is minimal per item you know, yeah. you've got the kind of get out of jail free card of bundling it all. If you if you end up think finding out it's all rubbish, yeah. So it's hard to say. I would dabble in it, buy a few bundles, and you'll soon learn what what to to kind of go for and not, what not to go for. There's nothing that replaces experience. I can't really tell you what I've learned. Thing is, twenty years of doing it. If you buy it cheap enough, it's not like you're risking a mortgage payment on it, is it? Well, that's the thing. You know, exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's the know. point you make your money in this game is when you buy it. You yeah. Know I mean? yeah you... That decision, that moment is where you make your money or you don't. So if you can yeah. get stuff cheap enough and, you, and your risk factor is low enough, go for well, it. Well, that, was, that and... was something Shazad said on a stream months and months and months ago. He says a lot of people, I mean, Shazad's very, obviously, very successful. Um, I was unsure of him at first, but you know, after talking to him and that, yeah, he's a very successful bloke. But he had a good point. He said, you know, people fail to understand in business. He says you make your money when you buy it, not when you sell it. It's stupid as it sounds, but you know, it's the buying point, which you know, <coughs> makes you know. which um, which part of Australia are you from? VNV mode. Someone's just said hello to you. Hello. I think. saw the Queen cassette two weeks ago, uh, the Miracle. Um, it was in pretty rough shape, the box. Um, but I, I got eight dollars for it. It's not massive, you know. But uh, yeah. Ah, someone who's been following my DM channel, which I was chatting to you about. We we reached four hundred. We. Yeah. I reached 400 subs on it uh, today. Yeah, yeah. Um, talking of which, <laughs> here comes the plug. <laughs> <laughs> These arrived today. I was a very naughty boy and spent a lot of money on that collection. <laughs> which is that an Erasure collection? It is indeed. There's some. There's some gems in there. There's some. There's some real collectors bits. Um, oh, so I had to, I had to pay a bit. Were... How long were Erasure actually active as a band? How many years? Uh, they started in 84, 83, 84, I'm thinking. Yeah. 
Not sure, but they're still active now. They've got a new album coming out Ooh. shortly. Because they were they were like um, they were put together by someone, weren't they? No, they didn't meet by mutual. Andy Bell and the guy, the keyboard player, he was from another band, weren't he? Is Vince, is he called? Vince Clark started in Depeche Mode, and then yeah. he did the assembly in Yazoo, and then ended up um, doing Erasure. But he basically auditioned singers until he found Andy yeah. and was like, you're the yeah. guy. Um, right. But no, nobody put them together as such. He just he just said, I'm, I'm going to start a new project. I need a singer okay. who, has, who has that je ne sais quoi thing. Met Andy yeah. and they were like, boom, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, I must say, he looks a bit freaky looking these days, doesn't he? What, Andy? Yeah. I think he's had some work done. Work? My God. He's a <laughs> refund. He's another one who looks freaky these days, Jimmy Somerville. But, God, he can still sing. Oh, I saw Jimmy live, what was it, a couple of years ago. He's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Still got that same high-pitched voice. Yeah, that... Um... What do you call it? Falsetto or something, is it? You remember the, when he was in the communards, uh, Don't Leave Me This Way, and he was he, he was a duet with a woman, and the woman sang the low part. Was, was that it? Alison Moye? No, 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 no. It was a woman who never really had a career beyond that, that I know, but she turned up on stage with him at the festival. It was awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. For years, they thought Alison Moye were a bloke, didn't they? There was a bit of a conspiracy. When she first came out, they thought... She was a bit blokey. Who's they? You might have done. <laughs> the well, name of mate in the pub. Me. <laughs> well, me and my mate in the pub thought she was. <laughs> I, sh I remember having a chat with you about that ages ago, and I sent you a picture of Alison Moye today, and you were like, holy oh, cow. Yeah. yeah, see? Nice looking bloke. <laughs> but the, the reason why I was asking how long were the active was... But there's a, You've yeah, got a big bundle. Yeah, do. You've got a big bundle of CDs there. Now, you've, you've also shown on your other channel a huge collection of it. There must have been only so many songs you can buy of theirs. That's what I'm getting at. It's... They have been prolific for now, what, three decades? Four decades. <sighs> right. So, and they're a prolific singles band as well. So... Yeah. If, if you're collecting and you want like each version of the single on each version in on each format, uh, then yeah, I, I will not complete an erasure collection. It's almost impossible. Oh wow! Um, I but, couldn't name I couldn't name you one song of theirs. Oh, you'd know if you heard them. A little respect. Yeah, is, that's the, yeah, that's probably the only one. Sometimes that yeah, you'd know if you heard them. Yeah, probably that one as well. <laughs> okay, keep Stop. going. <laughs> Stop was another good one. Oh God! <laughs> no, know? that was Sam Brown, weren't it? Sam Brown did a version. Of it. She used to have a oh, Sam voice. Brown. Yeah, different song completely, but what a record! Yes, oh, yeah. love. She was um, um, Joe Brown's daughter, wasn't she? Daughter of Joe Brown. Yeah, you, you beat me to it. Yeah, it's not a quiz. <laughs> Shall I show you what I'm listening now? Goblin, greatest hits. Never heard of him. Have you not? There's, no. there's money in Goblin stuff. 15 quid, I'm asking for that. Anyway, let's actually list something. Goblin Greatest Hits CD album. Free barcode. Mm. If you can hear a tapping, um, like someone banging a drum, it's a magpie outside. It, I stripped a clothes dryer at weekend to clean it out, and um, <clears throat> we were replacing it. But um, the curiosity in me just wanted to see how it worked, so I opened it all apart. But the, the actual drum inside I've kept for a fire pit, and it's very reflective on the outside, and it's just sat there. And this magpie keeps coming in and headbutting it. It's seeing its reflection, and it's, you know, 
uh, I think it's got a nest in one of the trees because every now and again, when we first came to Australia, we used to see people riding around on the push bikes with zip ties on the helmet like this. And what the, what, what's the goal with this? The in nest, mate, nesting season, whatever they call it, the magpies will swoop you if you're near their nest and they'll, they'll you know, people have lost eyes and all sorts for them. Um, so I'm a little bit wary of this magpie when they come out of the shed. So while it's busy headbutting the drum outside, I know I'm pretty safe to go in and make a cup of tea. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's just seeing its own reflection and trying to get get rid of the other bird. Feeling threatened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's stupid, but I'm stupid for watching it. <laughs> Let's see what the chat's saying quick. Yeah, cassettes are cassette singles can be really sought after. It's not a format I'm collecting, um, but I've, I've certainly bought and sold a few <laughs> in my time. Yep, Zane's talking about taking the risk. Best way to know is to try things. Yeah, exactly. Have a go. Experiment a bit. If you do enough kind of research to know that, that your investment should be safe, you've got a get out of jail free card. You know what I mean? You can sell it off as a job lot and get your money back fairly easily. Then you're, you're golden, really. You can take a chance and see how you get on. I'll just grab some of these. Good night. Jen. Okay, right, let's get this CD listed. So, Goblin, Greatest Hits, CD album, pre barcode, Cinebox issue. What's the date on it? 1987. The Pet Shop Boys were Christmas number one, with always in my mind. Very good, clean condition. Um, I'm in uh, VN mode, uh, VNV, sorry. Is that a reference to the Commodore? Then? Um, I'm in um, Queensland in the Lockie Valley. It's, I think it's about... 50 kilometers or so east of Toowoomba. Oops. Handles fell off my box. Talking of albums, this is the one I was, you said about Donna Summer. Uh, oh, gate, yeah. Gatefold. So what's that then? Late seventies. Um, yes, in seventy-eight. Let's have a look. It's got hot stuff on it. That was the full Monty one, wasn't it? Hot um, stuff. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, produced by Giorgio Moroder. Now, who ever heard that name before? Oh, he was a big producer in in the eighties. So is that not? Is it eighties then? Maybe. Well, perhaps he did work in the. Let's have a look on the it'll be on the album, won't it? 79. Oh, one year out. Oh. Story of my life. You're pretty pretty tasty, Donna Summer, weren't you? Oh yeah. She were gorgeous, she were. Look at this. 1978 War of the Worlds. Oh, I love that. Do you know, I've never actually heard... Oh, what's this? Heard it. Got oh. a little booklet inside. Have a listen. The Eve of the War, um, Forever Autumn. Oh, that's such a good track. I, I haven't got a record player. <laughs> oh. Most of them will be on YouTube. Phil Linnett. He was in Thin Lizzy. What's he doing on War of the Worlds? Oh. Did he play on it or... 
Sing. Those names on it. Along with David Essex. Yep. I saw a modern version of the stage show at the O2 in London. Must be about 10 years ago now. I I sold about two months ago. I think it was a double DVD. And it was, it might have been that, what he was talking about. Was it like the, the London Philharmonic played War of the Worlds and it was a, a weekend event and they videoed it? And, um, yeah. Yeah. I got, I think I got about forty dollars for that DVD. There weren't, there was none on eBay Australia. I think it was, well, it must have been made over here because it was Region Four, which is what we are. So, yeah, anyway, it was just the only one, and uh, yeah, it did really well. <coughs> hey, Don, how are you? Uh, restrictions in Queensland, um, well, in terms of are the op shops or the charity shops open, mine are, but I've got a funny feeling they're all going to be shutting soon. Um, I think they've blocked off the borders of New South Wales and the ACT, so at least that keeps Mel out of Queensland. Um, <laughs> keep, keep them back down there. Yeah, I'm not surprised Kiss Cassettes go for money. The rock stuff, and the earlier the better. When I listed, when I had that massive haul, the stuff that flew out predictably was like um, Bowie, Floyd, Stones. Yeah. All the, all the classics. Yeah, it has got a booklet inside. Um... Hades detecting, yeah, it's stapled on the inside. How many do you list? Or do you just list whatever you feel like? It varies completely. I have really productive days. I have days where I do next to nothing. It, it's, yeah, I'm not consistent, but then I, I can choose how I want to work, right? Yeah. No, you know, you get. What I was saying earlier, you buy job lots and you don't get, um, you know, you can't pick and choose. So you've got to take the rough with a smooth. And my God, is this turned rough? Oh, Max. Oh, no. You know, <laughs> eBay, eBay is renowned for performing miracles and but I, I think it would even test is, is anyone in the chat any sold any max bygraves whether it be lp cd dvd or wax drum recordings anything <laughs> but um yeah they seem to be the, i remember these seem to be the only albums he ever brought out but they all seem to surprisingly come out at christmas like richard Claydeman albums Have you still got? Was it Richard Claydeman you were trying to shift way back when? Still got him. Still got it. Still got him. <laughs> still Can't get it. rid of him. <laughs> piano. Now, you're the the go-to person for for music. Who wasn't Debbie Harry? Yes, I fancy her back in the day. Can't knock a bit of Debbie. Go on. She's English, isn't she? Um. I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, Debbie Harry's English. She was adopted when she was um, a child and ended up in America. Oh, okay. Because I thought they I were... I've not this stuff up. There is certain truth. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure you're right. <laughs> I know they were a New York band. She she was in New York and the band formed around there. I think perhaps the blokes are all Americans. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, yeah, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure she was... Uh, it's like Slash. He was originally from Stoke in the UK. <laughs> and coins fun fact slash's mum used to be the house cleaner for david bowie i've heard slash talking about the connection she had and she used to make outfits didn't yeah, she for his ziggy stardust days 
Yeah, there's some really interesting interviews and, and like documentaries about Slash and the, the early days of Guns N' Roses and stuff. Mm. Uh, he's lived an amazing life. Well, someone's just said she was born in Florida. I read she was born in... Oh, am I thinking of Kim Cattrall? No, I might be thinking of Kim Cattrall out of Sex in the City because they look similar, don't we? Furnishing us with, with, with false facts here, Rod. Well, it's only like everyone's government, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Warning, any facts <laughs> that, that come out of this video may not be true. Now, have you ever heard of a singer called no, it might be particular to australia this so kim durant nope oh well i've got this album and it's signed for surely best wishes always love kim durant it's the first time i've seen it well, just because something's signed doesn't mean it's worth much. So you've got to find someone who actually <laughs> wants it. In it. my world. Hey, oh, Dawn says 1980. We can't see a date on here. It was actually manufactured in Brisbane. No, there's no date. It's a blow. Has Dawn, has Dawn added any more to this? <laughs> All right, I think we've dispelled the, the myth I put out about Debbie Harry. It must be Kim Cottrell. Yeah, she's, uh, she's British for sure. And, and then she sounds British as well. I mean, that one... <laughs> You know, that's how I got the Stoke connection with Slash because I think she was born in Stoke. Yes, it was. I, I watched a Who Do You Think You Are about five or so months ago and she was on it. I think. Not sure now. Oh, I don't know. Now we're getting better. Look at this one. Black Sabbath. Oh, that's nice. That's one of the greatest hits. But... Huh. 1977, it's got on the back. Blimey. Wish this was signed. I quite like the title of this. Once more that... into the bleach. <laughs> Is that oh. Debbie Harry? Oh, Debbie Harry, yeah, yeah. Yes, Caroline, it's Black Sabbath. I used to fancy this this woman when I was about, well, I don't know how old I was when I was fancied her, but back in the day when you used to, like, she used to appear on Morecambe and Wise Christmas specials and things like that. Nana Miss Gory. Oh. I don't know what it was about her at the time. I just hey. couldn't, couldn't sing you one of her songs. I don't even know any of them, but, yeah. I don't know. Seemed very mumsy. <laughs> we're learning we're learning stuff about rod tonight who's this la, 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 la. my product oh, oh, Johnny Cash. has gone downhill oh, what that, has is it quite a right go on sorry i missed that i was so my productivity has gone downhill. <laughs> oh, it does, yeah. Oh, oh, I think I'll keep this. Hang on. See, the album just fell out of it. Oh, God. Went on. La, 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 da. Do, 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 do. Cat Stevens. Greatest now. hits. He's changed his name to uh, yes, no, no. Uh, Yusuf. Is Yusuf it? Islam. There we go. Pop he fact. could have been. He could have been a Buddhist uh, after a surfing incident. Changed his uh, 
I've read his autobiography. It's quite, quite well. Actually. Laney, these aren't my personal collection. They're just a random job a lot of both. I've heard uh, this is where the grumpy and old men are. Is that what you're trying to say, Ian? It's like cocoon before the water. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's a, that's a classic, that is. I could Speaking do... of classics, yeah, I'll take it out of the, the reflective the cover because it's reflected on the screen, I think. Hawkwind. Ah, yeah. I listed a Hawkwind CD. I think I showed you, didn't I? What year is this? Four four CD set. I think I listed it for fifteen pounds or something. Nineteen seventy six. I've never listened to Hawkwind. Are they kind of like trippy space rock stuff? Isn't it? Yeah. I back in the day, um, I I got into Hawkwind through Motorhead because. Lemmy used to be the Lemmy ended up being the bassist stroke singer of Hawkwind for a while. He was a, ro a roadie for him, and um, the, the bass guitarist apparently was always drunk, etc. And anyway, he ended up getting a job when the bass guitarist never never turned up. But um, I think Lemmy was also a, a roadie for no, no, that's ZZ Top, the, Billy Gibbons, who plays in ZZ Top. He was a, a roadie for Jimi Hendrix back in the day, apparently. My mind's full of useless information. Here's a good one. Who do you reckon that is in the middle? Anyone in the chat? We've all had a haircut like that at some point, haven't we? He was the son of a very, very famous singer-songwriter. Um, uh, any more clues? <laughs> see, see if the chat gets it. The son of one of the Fab Four. I'll give you that much. It's got to be Ringo Starr, hasn't it? With a haircut. No, the son of one of the Fab Four. Yeah, that's what I mean. It was oh, the son of Ringo Starr. No, no, no. All right, well, <laughs> we're narrowing it down. <laughs> we'll get there sooner or later. John Lennon? Yes, but which one? Because he had two sons, both, who had a recording career. Yeah, it'd be his first, the one who looked like him, wouldn't it? He, he go, Julian. Yes. It is Julian Lennon, and I've got two of his albums here. Um, this one I'm going to go for nine pounds, which isn't too bad for a CD that cost me 20p. The other one I'm going for a fiver. I remember the first song he brought out, I can't remember what it was called, but it, it didn't half sound like him on the song. The whole, the whole music, the voice, he was very, um, very similar. Yeah, I bought one of his singles, um, Salt Water, it was called. And that sounded a lot. That was it. Yeah, it was very melancholy, wasn't it? Yeah. Salt water gets in. Kind of... Yeah, uh, 1991, I think, something like that. Why is that not working? Okay. No, there's a there was a mag, there's a guy over here who sells um, old or has done. I think I don't know if they're a magazine or like a kind of a, a book. Uh, Foot Rock Flats. You heard of that? No. 
Oh, well, <laughs> ruin me next question then. <laughs> Does, has anybody in the chat heard of Foot Rot Flats? It's like a cartoon series, mini stories type thing. But um, well, just on an album. Off. Why did my kaching not go off? Oh, it's on silent. Damn it! Sorry. Oh. Now I've seen this, this in in book format, like not book, like a magazine, I think. Oh, here we go. It's, so it's oh, it's peculiar to Australia, is it? Uh, sh shame on me. What? Why shame, Dom? I'm going to keep that out because it might be uh, full of dust. These things. Oh, here you go. Bells. Yeah. Now, talk, you were saying earlier when I was sharing some of these records, like a lot of these sold millions. That would have yeah. sold literally millions. Well, this was the the one that made Richard Branson's. I was going to say, it, start it, off, it, it set Richard Branson up. And Virgin Records, yeah. yeah. Is, is is Mike Oldfield still alive? I does believe it, does so. need to be added to my list. <laughs> add, it, add, it, add him to your hurry up and die. I've got some of your records list. Uh, growing that list. Da, 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 da. 1974. Wow. How old was I? I was seven. I was one. <laughs> uh, one year old. It cost $8.99 from Chandler's Music Center. Do you take off things like that? You leave the, the old price tags on because it add, I think it adds a little bit of um what's the word? I think if it if it is vintage, maybe it's better yeah. to leave it on for two reasons, I guess. One, because it is a point of interest, and two, yeah. you might ruin the damn thing if you put it off anyway. That's true, yeah. Um, but with modern stuff, I, I would tend to take them off. I mean, with all the stuff, it's kind of in a way it's provenance as well, isn't it? You know, it's like the <coughs> the authenticity kind of aspect as well. So, yeah, there was some in here that had um, labels on. I'm sure this was one that Andrew is actually keeping. Culture Club, two pound ninety nine. Mm. I don't know if that was on clearance. Uh, do you know I, I i really could not stand culture club <clears throat> the whole yeah didn't like him got some decent uh fleetwood mac but i mean i get they sold in big numbers but they will there will still be a market it's a really nice double disc edition of tusk in there really cool but again it, i don't think it's worth much because in the 70s Fleetwood Mac was selling more records than almost anyone apart from the Eagles and maybe Floyd. So there are yeah. there are literally millions of copies out there. Um, but there's still a demand for them, you know. Who's this? Right, let's list this CD. Oh, wow. Uh, Black Sabbath Gatefold Aussie LP, was it? Was it a gatefold you had? Oh, so, no, it was just, uh, no, it was a standard one. It was just, um, it was just the greatest hits, but brought out back in the day. Hi, Marilyn. You're up late. 
Oh, now we're talking. It's a bit ratted, though. Oh, I sold. Did I share? I had a couple of their yeah. albums. I sold them. I sold them today. They've gone out of the building. Yeah. I, I did. I did like them. I liked them all. I mean, I preferred the original lineup, but um, I did like it when Glenn Hughes came in. They, they released Burn. But um, yeah. Good night, Andrew. Yeah. If if you're still here. Now, here's a question for anyone as well. You know when you get this on an album, when it separates from, you know. It's quite common. Would you be tempted to put a little bit of a hot glue thing on there and get it back flat again? Or would you just leave it kind of flapping about in the wind? I, w I would stick it back. Yeah. Yeah. Just be a little bit careful of what glue you use and, and, and don't use much. Yeah. If you if yeah. you overglue it, you can cause more <laughs> issues than you had when you started. You know. Yeah, there was another Black Sabbath here. Master of Reality. Oh yeah. yeah. That's annoying when you get you get that ring wear or whatever they call it, where the yeah. The, yeah, the, the vinyl kind of shows but, through, it pushes through. Yeah, it? yeah, they've just been stored badly, I guess. Perhaps they've Ooh, been. Darren says, Darren says a prit stick works a treat on LP sleeves. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Was the hawk wind? That that stock behind you won't list itself. I'm well aware. That's why I'm sat here listing. I'm listening quite slowly now. I'm chatting with Rob, but I am listening. <laughs> Most of what you see in this image is actually listed. Uh, all the car parts are listed. Where, 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 where? There. And all the car parts behind me here are listed. Ooh. Rick Wakeman, Journey to the Centre of the Earth, a gatefold. Yeah, maybe that's the artwork. Work. So this is what I liked about albums back in the day, all the artwork you got with them. Now, you, even when you buy a CD, you've got to buy a pair of binoculars to see the thing. Yeah. Yeah, and that experience of putting it on the record player. Yeah. Up, I used to sit on the floor in my bedroom, put the record on, and I would just stare at the sleeve notes for that whole hour, right? Yeah. And you go into that world and you'd read all the liner notes you'd, you'd read all of those thank yous by all the bands and you'd look at all the pictures and yeah. drift away yeah no um where are oh, the comments gone where is it oh laney, Darren. laney was saying you had bad t taste before it was about nana muscuri not your music taste all right What's wrong with nana muscuri i don't know Oh, people were guessing uh, Julian Lennon. The, the chat is really slow. It's way, way behind in here. It's mm, not an issue with this Black Sabbath. Well, I'm just going on to see. Darren says if it's on Vertigo Records, it's worth a fair bit, but I don't know if the thing will show up. It's got actually got um, there. See that? Yeah. It's not an actual scratch. You can't feel it. It's more like a scuff mark. Yes, it's on Vertigo Records, Darren, anyway. There you go. Well, get it listed, declare that mark, and get it going. I'm going to have a quick look while I'm on my phone. Hey, Niall. Right, yes, right, I'm going to list something. <laughs> I keep getting distracted by the chat. Right, Julian Lennon. <laughs> Going on at nine pounds. Find the pictures. Where are you, Julian? There you are. Done. Complete draft. Oh, wow. Have you made your fortune? 
Not quite, but uh, try it. Oh, try a bit of methylated spirits on it, mate. I will do. Thank you. Um, yeah, Darren's spot on. Um, in a jeez. Oh, there's one here, 19... I suppose it all depends on the the number as well in the middle, doesn't it? One here for $150. Then there's one for 62 hmm. Yeah, right. the exact like catalogue number and stuff you've got. Let's see what the solds were. <clears throat> one went for fifty dollars plus shipping again 50 62 it seems to be a ooh, someone got 145 dollars for one so look at that one so yeah there's the if they've actually put the pressing on this 6360 6360 it's the same pressing number as well Happy days. I think it might have come with a poster or something as well. But mine's not got a poster. Is that the Sabbath one you're talking about? Yeah, this um, best this one, Masters of Reality. Oh, okay, cool. I put that. To Cheers, Darren. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> and there it ends. The vertigo label on side one is like that. Mine is just standard. Oh, okay. Yeah. And side, oh, that was side two, and side one is basically mine's not got the same. So it's just a different issue. A different label. It, but it, yeah, but it's got the same press pressing number. Let's go for the cheap one. See what? No, I knew the cheap one's still fifty dollars. So I'd be happy with that. Well, that that's the same. Why is mine different? Why, is, Darren? Help! <laughs> Why? Why is mine different? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to do a bit of research on that one. Ba, 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 ba. Put it with my foot rot flat. Right. That's the Julian Lennon's done. Oh, 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 oh dear, you're going to love this one. You ready? Now, when I saw this just then, it reminded me of Russ Abbott with the Costello adverts. Yeah. Oh wow, Des O'Connor! Oh, with a pink shirt. <laughs> where, he, where he hand, where he put the record in the, the the river and all the fish jumped out. <laughs> I love how they they've matched the typography to his shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's oh. a classic. That is. Oh dear. Check completed on that. I bet it's worth a fortune. <laughs> The rare pink shirt edition that'll be not. It's from apparently it's from the gold star series as well. So yeah. Well, that'll make it really expensive then. So is he on your list of people you want to kick the bucket now? <laughs> uh, I don't I don't no, I couldn't do it to Des. <laughs> <laughs> so many happy Childhood memories watching TV with Des. I couldn't do it. <clears throat> Sing a favourite song, LP. Oh, God. It's, it's on eBay. 
doesn't mean it's going to sell, but $9.50 plus post. Who are these people? None have sold. Oh, none completed. Uh, do, you get, last... do you get Terrapeak down there to do research? Do you use that? We do, but I don't. Um, uh. Yeah, I don't, I don't use it. I know people who do. But yeah, I've, I've I found have... it really handy recently. It, it really oh, Darren's, gives Darren's you... saying, sorry, go on, sorry. I'm I was say, just quickly, it, it gives you confidence. If you find something that there are no completed and you think there's only a few listed at silly money and you think, are they just shooting for the moon? When you mm. use therapy and you might find one that sold six months ago and it, and it genuinely went for silly money, it, it gives you okay. confidence to aim, aim high. Whereas in the past, I might have just thought these people are chances, and I'll I'll, I'll come way down yeah. to the tail. But yeah, no, I, I use it a lot actually. I might look into it. And... Now Ian has just commented, and I remember him. I don't know if he put a post on Instagram or he told me about this a few months ago. He sold lots of Bollywood stuff. Oh yeah, and um, yeah, I. I, I went to I, I love my local tip shop not so much these days because the, the, the people in my area aren't donating as much as they used to um, but um, there was a lot of um, we have a lot of backpackers in the next town who pick the fruit the vegetables etc as part of their visa um, you know requirement and there's a lot of a lot of them who come from say Malaysia India China all them places. And so I, I find quite a bit of anime um, magazines in my local charity shops because they, they've come over with them and they've read them. And they, the, the frustrating thing about anime is the books are back to front. Um, they're just it's so frustrating. Anyway, but also the Indians leave, seem to leave a lot of Bollywood stuff, you know, like all these Indian films. And I've got some in, in a box, which I was got. There's a big box here of, Redonations, um, but I might dig the rest of this Bollywood. I, I quite like watching some of the Bollywood films, I can't understand it, but they're full of action. Um, but they went really well for me not so long ago. All, all the, these, you know, Indian films, so I'm not surprised you did well. Yeah, I've never come across any so far. Mm. Right, Abba Gold sealed. Can't find my picture. I just sold an Abba CD a few weeks ago. Oh, it was weird when we went on. I think it was the Sunday Jumble Trail. We went on everywhere we went. Abba were following us. We would either pick, you know, find an Abba <laughs> CD oh, or an Abba vinyl. <laughs> Yeah, Benny. Go away, Agni. Go on away. Yeah. Go off, Benny. Um, <laughs> but like you'd rock up to a, a, a stall and they'd have a stereo playing and it'd be like Mamma Mia or something, you know. And then you go to another one, it'd be Abba. Yeah. And then you'd pick up an Abba record and then it, it was just, it was, it got freaky by the end of the day. It was just everywhere. And then we got yeah. back to the car and it was on the radio. It's like, oh, oh too much. Yeah. All right. I've got two older sisters, and and they were a bit older than me. And my next sister up, she was into like Abba and Motown and all that seventies stuff, you know. My other sister was into like Black Sabbath, and so I had a varied kind of musical um, experience in the house when I was growing up. But um, oh yeah, I remember me, my sister, the the next one up. She had the I can't remember the album name. I can't remember it, but there was. The band on the front but it was mainly the two women oh my god when i was like in the you know in the 70s and this this album i used to just drool over the <laughs> two, two women but I, I quite fancied the brunette more than the blonde oh yeah or oh, someone saying that sean lennon not julian lennon you just listed oh i've just yeah I have one of each. I listed the Julian and then went in and, and listed the Sean using the cell similar and didn't change his name. 
Thanks for spotting that. That was, that was Johnny Forty Kills. This is what happens when I list late and I'm also talking to you and reading the chat. Mm. <laughs> Excellent. Right, I'll go in and adjust that. I can't find the picture of me have a gold. I'll have to take another one quick. I better do that now. Bear with. Have, have you? Where's he gone? I'm right here. I'll be there in a second. <laughs> Hiya, Peter. How are you? Is that Peter Ray? It is indeed. Oh, I can just use the stock image. It's provided me one, with one anyway, so that'll do. Give it the old, I'm quite happy to use the stock image. Uh, now, have you ever sold this board game in the UK? I, I, I can't sell board games over here. I just can't do it. They just don't go for me. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. I, I bought this at a car boot sale. Not a car boot sale, tell a lie. A garage sale, sorry. Um, now, I paid $5 for it, and the lady said to me, oh, it's complete. You know, famous last words. And um, there's two or three bits missing out of it. Now, they're like a little... Hang on. These things, little counter type things, paper, card, whatever you call it, counter. Yeah. There's some of them missing. I, I can't find another one of these anywhere that's willing to. Every, all the other ones I find are complete. Um, so, what's the point in buying a complete one to make up your set complete? So, this is basically, for me, it's scrap. Um, I'm reluctant to throw it away because, you know, it's going to happen, isn't it? I'll, I'll throw it away and not so long later I'll find one and they'll have the spares for it. But I can't seem to sell board games or sell spares for board games. It's just not worth it. Um, so if, if anyone in your chat <laughs> wants or has got this game, and they need spares for it. If you're prepared to pay the postage, I will willingly ship it to you. You can have it. So, if anyone, what if you want the box? If you want the post, pay the postage. You can have it. But yeah. So there you go. It's my my gift to you. <laughs> there you go. Because I know there's a. I know, I know. I know there's a lot of people in the UK who sell board games and board games. I know, I think I've seen Peter say he's, he's sold spares in the past. Uh, certainly yourself. Um, no, there's no money in board games, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there wasn't over here. <laughs> I'd be making a killing. Yeah, well, I think you, we've talked about it before, and it, it's much more of an outdoorsy country, isn't it? They're yeah. literally out in the garden or in the pool or yeah. or or having a barbecue. I know it's a stereotype, but you know they're outside yeah. stuff, right? So yeah. it makes sense, I guess. Yeah, board board games just don't. I mean, they do sell. And and there's a lady over here. I won't say her name, but you know, there's a lady over here I speak to every day. And she does really well with board games. I just don't know what her secret is. You know, the, the listings are nothing special. And, she, you know, she'd even say that herself. Um, but I just cannot, can't move them. Well, my, my lad's just coming in. He's um, he's bringing me my, my breakfast. So, cheers, mate. Can we have a cup of tea as well? Hello. Please, please. They're not saying hello. Uh, hello. So, McDonald's. Um, <laughs> nice. All right. 
I won't open the packet just yet because it'll be too uh, too right. noisy. Here you go then, Rod. We'll test your pop knowledge again. Oh, okay, okay. Who's this guy? Um, oh, aha. Let me think. <laughs> oh, you know that one. I did share this in the Hangout the other week, didn't I? Did you see it? Is, on that? is, it, is, it, uh, is he called Jurgen Klinsmann or something? <laughs> it was right there, look. I can't see that. Morton Harkett. Sounds like somewhere in the East Midlands, doesn't it? Like... <laughs> uh, something. Yeah, it's a good one. Summer murderish. Pick it up if you see I it. Just drift at Morton Harkett. <laughs> There's been a murder. That was my very best Scottish. That was. I had an incident not so long ago when I was testing a VCR. Good job I didn't use a good tape. <laughs> yeah, it really chewed it up. I did a, I did a quick, probably the last video and ever video I'll ever do. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just glad I didn't put a a good tape in. <coughs> so yeah ian's just saying he's sold lots of bollywood cassettes and video cassettes yeah and he'd buy them in bulk again yeah i think i'd, I'd certainly give it a go i've never seen them you know, I said that about Bollywood, and, and a, a good while ago, I ended up somehow with a lot of French DVDs. Um, and no, there just does not seem there was, must have been a, an influx of French backpackers. Um, there just doesn't seem to be the market for French films. Uh, I mean, I've got one of them here, you know, Gerard Depardieu. You know, it's um. Yeah. Just... No, it says on the cover his name's Les. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's Les. It's Les Les Fugitif. Oh that famous Fug French actor. Yeah. Les Fugitif. <laughs> uh, Pete's asking how's the weather your way today? Uh to me, yeah. Hot one. Yeah, it was hot and muggy and it still is now. It's still really hot and muggy here. Freezing with body. It was, it was shockingly cold. It, I, I, yeah, I saw Peter the other day. He put a post out and he said it was 35 degrees. And I thought, surely not. He can't be sat in his oven. Uh, really hit 35? We had hottest weather for a long time. Yeah, a couple of days. Yeah, I got sunburnt when we were out sourcing. This is a thing. Um, Bromwyn over here put a post out the other day. And... Um, I never really thought about it, but obviously, like, I know it would happen over there, but it would take a longer period of time, I would imagine. But all these people walking around with face masks on, they go end up with like sunburnt face masks. Like he's going to have like a white patch over the face where this face masks been with the the sunburn. Yeah, you know, you know, never mind panda eyes. They're going to have like this weird looking white patch over the face in a bit you wait till you shave your beard off i i had uh beard lines when i last oh shaved. god <laughs> oh I, dear i just sold some stuff oh let me surely not i'll show you what's hold on just move me yazoo you got a kazoo I can't find where did where have I put them? Oh, they're, they're still here. One of them hasn't even left the desk. Which one is it? God. Oh, wow. It's not a subscriber, is it? I, I don't know if it's one of you lot. Thank you. Because I, I assume it's the same person has also bought. Did that is that one I listed today? No. Uh, another one for I think fifteen quid. The fog. It might be Johnny Forty Coats here. He's just said I just bought some stuff. Oh, John, probably is them. Says John on the order there. 
Why has one of them just vanished? There was... What's going on here? Oh, that one's moved down the... The eBay app's doing weird things. Let's see if the other one... I wish one mine would do some weird things if it involves sales. Yeah, same name on both. Well, if that's you, Johnny, thank you so much. Good old soundtrack CDs. Right, let's list me me uh, Market Harbour, whatever his name was. Morton Harkett, that's it. Did he? I yeah, Johnny's saying yes, it was me. Yeah, Him. fantastic. Late night Did, uh... Hey, just like that. <laughs> Tommy Cooper. <laughs> Did uh, did Martin Midsummer do a, a solo career? Uh, briefly, uh, yeah. he he's he then went back to Aha, and and they've been kind of on and off ever since. Uh, he yeah. certainly had what well, this album. And there might have been another one. Um, wasn't wildly successful, hence quite hard to get hold of. Oh, okay. I was I was. Like the eighties, Trish loved the eighties sort of new romantic scene. You know all the Duran Duran when they first came out with the yeah, it's a great weird time. baggy pants. It wasn't for me. If I'd have walked around my hometown dressed like Duran Duran, I'd have had a good hiding, and quite rightly so. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know. But now with age and probably the right to be able to look back in time i do quite like listening to some of the the songs i'm not a i know you're a big fan of the human league i'm yep i'm kind of not um it's it's they're almost on a par with the pet shop boys i mean i just feel like it's someone talking with music going on behind them you haven't given it's it not a, really you haven't given it a it's chance not, but... it's not really singing is it it's like some yeah um <laughs> i'm not going to argue with you <laughs> does does uh the guy out of the human league still have that one side of his hair oh, he went to a concert a while ago didn't he you know no has he's, he got any hair he's not got this fringe thing going on yeah i think yeah. i think he just had kind of normal hair i think it's yeah. just short old man hair now yeah well i, I yeah. Yeah, there was a, there was another. There was, I mean, there was a. I, I used to like watching Top Reports back in the day because there was. Is that still going? No, no, it's been gone a long time. Has it? Yeah, ah. probably. But before it kind of got a run for its money with the tube, didn't it? With her, uh, who she called that blonde, um, Polly Ace. Oh. She was on the tube. It kind of got a bit of a run for its money with that, didn't it? You know, with bands going on and things. Well, but... I, I don't know so much. I, I think that there's still um, a big gap for a decent kind of regular music show to, you know, kind of... It yeah. was a tradition in our house. The whole family would sit and watch Top of the Pops every week. And, yeah. and, and if you managed to get your song on Top of the Pops, you would guarantee to sell a shed load of records next week. You know, it was just an institution. Yeah. And, they could bring it back today and it would be wildly popular. I don't know Do why. You think, they, why I, they I'm not it. so sure. I'm not so sure. I think kids today have got instant access to music whenever and wherever they want. Why would they want to tune in on a Thursday at half past seven to watch Top of the Pops? Well, if they had the artists in performing, then, mm. yeah, they would. Because, I mean, yeah, you can go on YouTube and you can watch the video or you can stream the song. Yeah. But yeah. I think if they made it more of a kind of um, almost a magazine program where maybe you had a bit of an interview with them as well and talked about yeah. their tour, made it more about stuff you can't get streamed, you know, an exclusive yeah. performance and stuff. That's what's lacking. I mean, like um, Jules Holland's, did you ever watch his show? The um, what's it Late Night or something. Late, late, later with... Show or something. Yeah. yeah, can't remember what it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah, you used to enjoy that. He had some good bands. He had, he had some obscure bands on as well. It was a bit like a, a modern, at that time, a modern-day version of the old Grey Whistle Test. Um, 
yeah, I used that, to love that. Love Grey Whistle. And that's the, the point of that show is to introduce people to bands they would have never otherwise discovered, you know. So you've got a mm. rock band on, then you've got some tribal group from Africa, and then you've got yeah. you know, the whole gamut of it. Um yeah, but I, I, well, as you know, Andrew and I sit in the evening and and watch reruns of Top of the Pops, um, and and they run them like consecutively. So as you go through yeah. the year, it's going through the year in I think we're up to nineteen eighty nine now, right? And it will just roll on, and and in a few months we'll be into nineteen ninety, and it's just so yeah. takes you back, and you remember you remember some performances. Is that awesome. Top of the Pops two? No, we're watching the originals reruns. Well, there, there, there was um, God, I, mean, I was in the UK at the time, and I think Steve Wright used to voice over Top of the Pops too, and I think it was on BBC too, and it used to show the old those songs or artists of old Top of the Pops. Yeah, you know, I thought it was Mark, the other DJ guy, who did the voiceovers. He was really funny. Used to be Mark and Lard. Um, Mark Radcliffe, wasn't it? Did Top of the Pops too? No idea. Or maybe that oh. maybe he took over from Steve Wright. But yeah, Top uh, of the Pops was great. They had loads of information about the band and and yeah, yeah. all those nuggets On of the bottom. facts. Yeah. I remember. I mean, I'm I'm going back to Top of the Pops. I remember it was like Dave Lee Travis and that guy from Canada, whatever you were called, Jimmy Small fella. And yeah, oh god, Jimmy Seville, yeah. Now then, now then, I was about oh Jesus. Oh. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. I'm surprised they, they won't show any of them, will they? Surely they won't show any old top of the pots with him on, I would imagine, nowadays. No, I I think they've they've wiped him from the records. There was an who was the other one who got done as well? It was Jonathan King. He used to do a, a king, he had a horrible head in, didn't he? It was like like he'd gone 10 rounds full on with Tyson. Um, used to do a show, didn't he? Jonathan King in the US or something. And, and Yeah, uh, I liked him even back in the day. He was just annoying. He was just... Yeah. He had no real charisma. I just found him irritating. To be yeah. honest, I'm the same with Steve Wright. I quite like Radio 2 to dip into, but if he's on, he just winds me up. <laughs> it's just like... I remember when I was when I was apprentice, he used to come home at night and I'd have the radio on in a, in the in the tram spitfire on the way home, you know. And um it'd be the Steve Wright in the afternoon show and I used to hate it because they'd do nothing but talk. And it's a bit like that on some of the radio stations I've found over here. I'm not saying in, all of them are the same, but um they'll just do nothing but talk now my idea of a radio station is to play some records not listen to what you did at weekend you know and what you're going to do the next weekend it, it, it's, play these damn records that's what i'm here for he's still on in the afternoon now the same show steve Wright in the afternoon is still on he I'm hasn't he there. hasn't retired yet but he's still doing the same gags and the same stuff <laughs> No, it's... There's some really good uh, Sarah Cox has a show now and I, I find her a brilliant DJ there's some other you know I think it's Joe Wiley yeah Joe Wiley's radio too I believe no oh, she moved but Joe Wiley's really good on the radio um, but yeah Steve Wright does not float my boat at all I used to like a nightingale well, your microphone just went did it oh sorry no. I used to like Annie Nightingale Oh, that's better. Remember her? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. It, it all went weird, and then and then there was an echo, oh, and now there's not. You, you're uh, back in the room. I have a funny feeling. My my, my lad is on this uh, job keeper thing over here because of the virus and everything. Um, and I have a funny feeling he's just cranked up battles or field or whatever it's called, so he's, he's probably stealing my internet connection probably i have to set my coat off now it's a bit warm now you were moaning it was cold before <sighs> sun's come out is it yeah all right that's that's the market harbour listed 
for thirteen ninety nine. Oh, hang on, no, I haven't submitted it yet. Done. Oh, we've been on. An hour. Oh, hour and fifty. Wow. We'll we'll break some records at this rate. Not literally. Please. I <laughs> could do a break in a few of these. Some of yours need breaking, yeah. yeah. You could do that thing and make make uh, make bowls out of them. That that trend came and went rather rapid. Yeah, I never even got the chance to. Uh, Trish wouldn't let me use the microwave. Oh, we we messed around with it ages ago when when we were doing craft fairs and stuff. And and you can get pretty high off the fumes. <laughs> I could imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it in a confined space. <laughs> oh, do you remember this fella? Never, never, never. Roussos, he sold a lot of records. He sold a lot of cloth for his suits as well, didn't he? Do you remember the um, Kenny Everett when he did the on the Kenny Everett show? And he, <laughs> yeah. I I heard a story about Dennis Roussos, and he was on a plane and it got hijacked, and and he was trying to like. Hide. I think it was a Greek internal flight, but he was trying to hide, um, you know, keep out of their radar, if you like. And uh, anyway, they found him. It wouldn't be hard, would it, spotting him on a plane? And um, the actually one of the conditions of the, the side he's on. <laughs> <laughs> you bring me to a funny point, actually. When we was emigrating to Australia. I'll get to that in a minute. I'll finish the Demis one first. Anyway, these hijackers actually made Demis Roussos sing on the plane as part of the negotiations. They, want, they wanted to hear him sing. So this poor bloke, stressed to the max, you know, he's on a hijacked plane and he has to start singing forever and ever and all his, all his hits. So, wow. Well, yeah, no, when we were emigrating, we was at Manchester Airport. But what they don't tell you is, so he started singing and all, all of the rest of the passengers just started jumping out of the windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, when we were at Manchester Airport waiting to, you know, check in and all this lot, and whatever, we were, we were at the, 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 the terminal. Now, because we were emigrating, we were allowed... At that time, with Singapore Airlines, we were actually allowed 40 kilos of baggage. And um, we went over by about a kilo or something like that. And um, they wanted to charge us some ridiculous um, price for, you know, excess baggage. So I thought, oh, that. So I was arguing the toss with this lady, this, this woman behind the counter. And... Um, she said, uh, she was going on about excess baggage and this, that, and the other. And I turned round and there was what looked, do you remember the roly polies? Yeah. Well, I can only say it must have been the, the roly poly dance troupe or something. Okay. Because these, they, well, they were there, you know, these people were there. And I said to this woman, You're charging me. A ridiculous amount of money for one kilo of excess baggage, yet all these are going to board this plane and potentially is going to have to, you know, counterbalance the plane. Or Now, why don't they charge excess baggage on planes for for that aspect? of Because it's still luggage. You're, you're treading a very thin, <laughs> thin line now, I think. Yeah, I know. I, I know, and I, I'm not trying to be... Be, be nasty or rude or anything like that but it it did i did question it at the time 
Anyway, she still insisted I had to pay for this extra kilo. So I think I just threw a pair of jeans in the bin and got it under. I'll buy a pair when I land in Australia. But uh, yeah, yeah it, I kind of felt it was a bit a bit hypocritical in a way that I'm being charged one kilo. Yeah, you know. Anyway. Yeah. No, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Uh, right, so Patty Smith we're on to now. I won't get rich selling this Patty Smith album. I'll be lucky to get two ninety nine for it. I won't get rich selling any of this lot I've just picked up either. Oh word. Take the rough with the smooth though, don't you? You know, you make your money on the good stuff and the other bits just uh that's the thing. I'm, I'm I'm failing to see where the good stuff is in this lot, <laughs> this this little pile at the moment. Good grief! Oh, I forgot to read David's comment. I used to love Top of the Pops. I remember in the early to mid '90s, I knew most of the bands from when I worked with Radio One. That's oh, wow. a cool job. Well, I remember back in the 90s when I was really into my music and I was buying so much stuff, I, w I would know every band in the chart. I would know all the songs they had out. You know, if there was a Top of the Pops now, I would be so out of touch. It would be painful. Really lost touch. Yeah. I was talking to Andrea about it the other night and she was saying, you know, she, she used to say, oh, when, I, when I'm a parent and when I'm, you know, in my 40s, 50s, whatever, I'm going to keep up to date with music. But you just don't. You, you stick with your era. That's that's just how it works. Yeah, you, you do. It's that comfort zone, isn't it? You, you stay with what you're comfortable yeah. with, you know. Um, a, good, a good few. Sorry. There's some music now that I'm really into that's current, but popular stuff now, I'm clueless, honestly. Yeah. What What's in and what's at number one? Not that the number one is anything anyone cares about anyone. Tell me yeah. in the chat what's number one, I bet nobody knows. <laughs> but it was a so big in the 80s and 90s. Number one was a big deal. You got that, you'd sell a lot of records, right? And and that's it, you've made it. Now it means, it means nothing. Well, do they still have a chart list yep. uh, because a lot of do downloads now so how would they actually yeah it's done on download yeah yeah mm. it, I'm, I'm just wondering if dawn is still in the chat because um i've said it many times over here whenever you go looking through the albums in um in the charity shops for some unknown reason, this fella seems to pop up an awful lot. Now, he must have been massive over here, because everywhere you go, like I said, Kamal. Oh, yeah, you've mentioned him before. Oh, well, look at this. How how much Kamal <laughs> does, does anyone have to endure? I've never heard endure? of him. Was he an Australian sensation, was he? Apparently so. I heard he was um, from somewhere like Papua New Guinea or something. But made Australia his home as I've done, and uh, he was uh, like this sensation in the eighties singer. And um, was it the eighties? Might have been seventies and eighties. I don't know. Do I care? Do I help? But, but he, he's, he's an advocate of a of a tea now, Dilmar tea. And, <coughs> um, yeah. Oh, Dawn is in the chat. Don says he was so popular like Rolf Harris. Well, perhaps that Kamal and would not want to be in Rolf Harris in the same sentence at the moment. <laughs> My chat is so broken. It's it's running about 10 minutes behind all the time. The latest comment I've got is this one, which was for 19 minutes past. I don't know yeah. why my chat in StreamYard is bust. Oh, Sri Lanka he was from. I I, I, I didn't know. Papua New Guinea, Sri Lanka, somewhere. I'm, I'm, that's ignorant of me again, but, you know. <coughs> um, 
think I've messed something up here. I'll put that to one side. I'll have a look at that later. I can't show it on the screen. It's a bit explicit. <laughs> So what's your have you listed much of this vinyl yet? Not tonight. Um, I, mean, um, I have. Uh I think I've listed about fifteen albums over the past I'd say three weeks. Um I'm, it, interested, I'm interested to know your your um how are you describing things? Are you are you using any grading system or you're just saying I've not played these, I can't guarantee anything or what are you doing well when when you list an album on ebay uh, it, you know these drop down boxes you have it'll say the condition say sleeve grading um it doesn't give you any less of a condition the lowest condition it will give you is good and then everything is like very good mint near mint mint and you know etc etc there's no kind of well it's acceptable mm -hmm. i mean this album's 20 years old plus um and like kent's just said there vinyl buyers are picky that's the worrying thing it's the one th item i really sh don't stress but question listing because vinyl buyers are a picky bunch yeah and if they can say you know find a fault with it they will do but I can't find anything within the drop downs that kind of relates to any of these albums I've got. I would say the, I've not got a I've not got a stereo, so I can't play them. But I, looking at them, they're good to go. They wouldn't, you know, they're not all ragged. Um, but I just put in the description um, general shelfware you would expect from an from an item of this age um and if there's any obvious flaws such as it's got a rip or a i don't know a tear on the then i would highlight that in the description but it, it is it'd be interesting if anyone in the chat room lists vinyl and um yeah you know I mean, they I, go about it. I tend to it just like say mention every floor because i mean being a buyer myself i know what i would like to know Mm. And, and take pictures of the corners pictures of the edges if you can yeah then it's there in black and white or well full color in the picture yeah you know they can't they can't moan that the corner's a bit dented because you're like well did you not look at number three picture number three where i highlighted dented corner so you, you yeah you the, 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 yeah it's i don't know it's um like i say the one item i do kind of stress over listing um i've never had an issue with i mean i don't sell masses and masses you know of vinyl but i have sold vinyl um you know i got a, got another des o'connor album here oh he's gonna uh, make you a fortune oh yeah i don't know where he's looking but it's not it's wow like, that looks like an early one it was Des O'Connor a specialist subject to yours then? No, he just looked vaguely young, but he always had a kind of old face to me anyway. You know what I mean? Well, this is... Doesn't say. Might say on the actual album. Right? Can't believe you've got me checking the date of the Des O'Connor album. I'm on uh, I'm on Johnny Cash now. Oh, there's a load of Johnny Cash albums over here. Oh, nice. There I mean, I like Johnny Cash, but, you know, after a while, all his songs sound the same, don't we? There could be some, uh, could be some gems in them. You know, there is no, there's, there, there isn't a date on it. There must be, must be an issue date on it. <laughs> Copyright. Absolutely, absolutely nothing. It says it was made in New South Wales. Oh, well, that's enough time spent researching Des O'Connor. 
Da, 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 da. Say what find awkward to put back in the actual. You know when you put um right. So you've you've got your your album in your nice little protective sleeve. Now how do you put the album in? Do you put it? There's the opening. Yeah. You put it that way. Yeah. Or do you struggle like hell and try and get it in sideways so the album doesn't fall out? No, I put it in top. Down. Oh, do you mean the opening on the inner? Do you line the opening on the inner up with the opening on the outer? Yeah. What... Yeah, I do. Well, I generally just plop it in like that. But yeah. the album could fall out. Yeah. There's nothing to stop it. That's how it... I because often I, I will just slide the record out and leave the inner inside anyway. Yeah. They're a nightmare. I mean, somehow it stretches because when it was made it fit level and then there's always seems to be this well it's in now that is in but it's this overhang <laughs> Des for you yeah i don't know what's up with my chat stream yard is not working Oh, Pete's Pete's gone. That's as far as I'm at in the chat. No, I didn't. Know. Is that Peter Ray? Yeah. Grab some more. Oh. We've got 64 viewers. That that is quite a feat. We have 64 viewers at 1:38 in the morning, <laughs> watching us ramble about music. Um, what am I doing? Right, Johnny Cash. Bitter Tears, CD album, blah, blah, blah. Very good condition. Uh, now, Johnny Cash, would you class him as country or rock? Well. He's more country, isn't he, really? I'm gonna do, oh, you can, you can choose rock and then country rock, folk country. Yeah. So I'm going to go there. When when Johnny Cash first started out, he was gospel, wasn't he? Was he really? He, yeah, he 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 first tried to get his songs. His songs were very gospel orientated. But obviously, <laughs> saw the money and went for country or rock or whatever you want to call it. Oh, well, here we go. 20 traditional Scottish favourites. Oh, now <laughs> you're in the money. We, My, my dad was um, uh, Scottish. And when we was in the UK, when I was a child, we had these neighbours. And they were a, a young couple with a new fancy hi-fi and everything. And they liked to share their music with everyone. Um, and it used to wind me dad up. So my, 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 my dad, I remember one day he bought this stereo and we were all going out and he put this, I'll never forget the album, it was the pipe and band music of the Argyle and Seaforth Highlanders. <laughs> and he put he worked out that this record would self-repeat. Basically, it was on a continuous play. And he went out and he turned the speakers round to face their wall, put it on full blast, and we all went out and had a wonderful day. And um, <laughs> thereafter, we never really got any loud music from next door. I think they must have had to go out because I, I, it was only so much I could stand, and it was my dad. You know. Do you, Do you see elements of your dad in yourself? Oh, every day. <laughs> Every day, I'm, I'm as tight-fisted as he was. I'm half Jewish as well on my dad's mate's side. Um, Scottish and Jewish mix. Oh, see, you're explaining a lot of things here now, Rod. Wow. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm um, half Jock and half English. I think there's a mixture of German in my mum's side somewhere. German or Dutch, one of the two. No, I don't, I don't hold any prospects for this oh oh dear yeah yeah 
he's kind of he kind of fell out of favor didn't he quite dramatically yeah there's a there's a sammy davis i love sammy davis jr um there's a sammy davis jr um clip on youtube of him singing uh, i gotta be me and it's a, in a, a live studio audience and um <clears throat> bill cosby is actually part of the band playing well i think he just turned up but he's got a cigar and he's he's playing these maracas he's just you know shaking them and um Yes, it was a bit annoying on it, and Sammy Davis actually stopped the song and basically told Bill Cosby just to give it a rest, you know. Oh. Um, well, that's on YouTube. You'd have to search for that. But, yeah, I don't think I've, I'd stand much chance of selling it. Is he still alive? Is, is, he, is he not passed away? I, th I haven't is heard he? that he has passed away. I think he's still alive. I'm not sure. He, didn't, he went to prison, didn't he? Is he still in there? Or? I I've no idea. I I haven't really paid any attention. Someone in the chat will know, I'm sure. All right, I'll be back in a second. I mean, yeah. Used to like his show, but uh shame so, really, anyway. Half of these, gee whiz, I mean, who's this? Ken Griffin. Oh, I'll save that one for when he comes back. Oh, and that one. Oh, Jesus Christ, what was that? It's only me. <laughs> well, someone just, jeez. Someone just slipped down the side of my chair and it, as it fell down my desk, it, it was my coat, the zip. Oh, bloody hell, hang on. The zip rubbed against the side of the desk and it sounded like someone going, oh. Oh, Blimey, don't have a heart attack live on air, whatever you do. Think of views, think of views. <laughs> think of views. Have you seen that, that video where that bloke in Australia <laughs> died? <laughs> Carps it when his zip makes a noise. That that was a, almost a frog incident, Mark, too, that, wasn't it? Oh, right, look at these two I've just dragged out. This has got to be worth something, at least. I can't read it. What does that say? Sing along. Bert, Bert and Ernie sing along. Oh, oh, yeah, I can see them now. Yeah, Sesame Street. Huh, maybe. 1975, the children's television workshop. I'm on to Pink Floyd's Best Of, Greatest Hits. Oh, doesn't seem to go for as much as it used to now. Look at this one. John Denver. And the, and Muppets. the Muppets. Now that Christmas could... together. Yeah. Oh, look. Is that any good? Oh, gatefold. That's cool, isn't it? Hey, we're there, look. There we are. <laughs> I bet there's a bit of a market for that, Rod. I like that. Watch this. I'll open it up and it'll be the wrong album. It was something like Donna Summer or something. Nah, that'll be in there. No, it's there. 1979. Wow. I like that one. It's in good condition as well. For its age, you know. Like myself. <clears throat> yep, just like us. <laughs> in fact, where's my phone? Oh, well, that's a bit of bad luck, guns, OG. He has a Gary Glitter record signed by him. Just a shame of what turned out. Yeah. Yeah, there's not much of a market anymore. Do they still, um, like, when you used to go around the the, the, the shopping malls, etc., in the UK around Christmas time, you know, I always used to say to Trish, it's not Christmas till you've heard Slade on the radio or in a store. Do they... 
I would imagine they don't play Gary Glitter's Christmas song anymore, do they not? I don't know. I bet it comes up because those stores, a lot of the stores just have like Christmas hits albums, don't they? Yeah. CD and stick it on. I bet they don't even know what's playing half the time. I, I did hear it over here one year. I was a bit surprised. Um, what was his Christmas hit then? Did he have a big Christmas hit? I can't even think what it would be. He must have done. And oh, he's gone. So, I mean, Slade, Slade, and Wizard, and the Pogues, and George Michael, all the staples. I can't think of a Gary Glitter one though. It was another rock and roll Christmas. Another rock and roll Christmas. Another Christmas. That's not Gary Glitter, is it? Isn't it? No, no, that's not Gary Glitter. Who is that? Don't know. Oh, somebody, somebody puts out of our misery. That's not Gary Glitter. Well, hang on, I'm still trying to find out how much John Denver's worth with the Muppets. <clears throat> oh, well, my chat that isn't still way behind. Lil Wayne is number one. I, I was had, had some facts about him, and I was shocked how many millions of records that that guy has sold. He is huge. Who is it? He's uh, American kind of rapper guy. Oh, oh rap! Oh, my God, no. oh, Ian's just sent me a the sold in the UK of Bert and Ernie's sing along, and I don't think I'll be. Well, Bert and Ernie won't be funding my pension. Let's put it that way. Oh, Thomas, yeah, do it. I, I've threatened to do Popmaster for years, but I'm I'm so scared that I'll have one of those rounds of questions where it's all just stuff I don't know. I can I can vary from getting like right up in the 30s on Popmaster, which is a really good score, all the way to virtually nothing. It scares the living daylights out of me thinking I'll be live on Radio 2 and get everything wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was Gary Glitter. Oh, I, I didn't think it was. I can hear, I can hear the song in my head now. Yeah, because I can see that stupid silver suit he used to wear, strutting around. And well, I'm pretty sure that's played in 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 places. Then mm. don't notice. Oh, VN saying it's yeah, oh, ten dollars. Oh God, mid John Denver, mint condition forty five. It ain't mint condition. Yeah, I'm the same, Thomas. Yeah, I'd panic and get them all wrong here. Yeah. Any of our Australian viewers remember Eddie's alphabet? Oops. Ah, oh, David was the photographer with the road shows. And some of the outside broadcasts, it was so much fun. I have some stories that folk wouldn't believe. Oh, I can imagine. Wow. Hmm. Them road shows with the what? Um... Oh no, I'm thinking a seaside special. No, this was they'd, they'd go to the coast somewhere and step, set up a stage and have a load of live yeah. action and broadcast it through Radio One. Okay. I was thinking of, um, do you remember that Seaside special? Yeah, we watched, um, th there was like one of those programs where they get loads of famous people on to comment about stuff. And they, they were talking about Seaside special and other shows from that era. Yeah. It was really funny. I can still remember the theme tune to the show. Yeah, and they'd have like like Knobbly Knees competition and Fat Ladies competition and, and, and all of the really un-PC stuff, wouldn't they? Yeah, it was a bit, a bit like... Heidi High, in a way. Heidi yeah, yeah, that was it. But that was entertainment then, and and nobody thought anything of it. You know, like the bikini competition and lovely legs competition and all that stuff. I've got a certificate for being winning first prize in a beautiful baby uh, competition at Blackpool when I was about two. That's my claim to fame. You were the beautiful baby. 
I know. It's hard to believe. Not well. true. Unlike this fella. Whoa, oh, what's going on there? Are like, they using your teeth? I don't know. It looks like Jimmy Cricket crossed with yeah, Jimmy, with, what's with it that. called? Um, turned out nice again. That words of damage. <laughs> no, you're thinking of um, ah, oh, when I'm cleaning windows. Yeah, what's it called? The guy on the TT races bike. Um, what's it called? <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> um, God, it's going to bug the hell out of me. That. Um, yeah. It, is it when I'm cleaning windows, guy? You're thinking of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, George Formby. It's that doctor. Thank Formby. you. Oh, it was on the tick of my, <laughs> my tongue. Oh. <laughs> right, I'm nearly there. I am nearly there. Nearly there. Right, let's do this. Pink Floyd got sidetracked again. Savers draft. I actually sold a CD certainly in this year since january um of this fella tennessee ernie ford never heard of him exactly uh, i'd never heard of him when i sold the cd but now i've got his album um i think he perhaps one of them gospel kind of early I don't know what I'm talking about, but yeah, he's a oh, he's a country, he's a country and western singer, but it's it's more religious songs he sings. Right, like for this one, for instance, standing in the need of prayer, like old time religion, that kind of. Uh, no. Sounds great. <laughs> I had a stereo. I'd play it for you. You won't get copyright. Probably YouTube's never even heard of him. Oh, no. Mel will like this. Dolly Parton. Oh, Dolly. Wow, that is it. That, she does look fairly young there. Yeah, I'll just hold the album a bit better. <laughs> you can't. You can't grab her there, Rod. First time I've heard it called her there. <laughs> well, I, I've gone the other extreme. I'm now on, on to uh, Oof. Nirvana. Here's, here's a lovely little financial tale you'll like. Right. A friend of mine who who lives in the, the next town, very good friend, she, she has a second-hand shop. And... Um, about a year or so ago, she went into a local charity shop and she came out with this T-shirt. And she knows what she's buying. She's well clean. <laughs> and uh, it was a Nirvana T-shirt, but it was a tour T-shirt. Um, but it was a... Did they, they brought an album out. I think it was called In Utero. Yep. Yep. And um, it was the album cover on this T-shirt. And it was quite a quite a rarity. I think it was one. Was it one of their first albums, or anyway, it was something with this album? Anyway, third. And she sold this T-shirt on eBay for four hundred dollars. I think she paid about three or four for it. The guy who bought it was the same guy who had the other one on. There was only two on eBay, and he had the other one on. Now, the, the other one he had was slightly better, she said, than than hers. And he had that on for a thousand dollars for a T-shirt. He basically bought bought my friends for four hundred, effectively taking it out, taking the competition away. His was on for a thousand. That sold because we we added it to our watch list. That sold, and then he added hers, used her pictures, so he didn't even have to bother retaking it. Oh, sold amazing. hers for seven hundred and fifty. Yeah. So he spent four hundred to remove the competition, made an extra three fifty on top and sold his thousand dollar one. But and I said to her, I said, Oh, when did you get it? 
and it was literally about an hour or two before I walked into the same charity shop. Oh, that was devastating. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me the value that went for. It's 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 crazy. I mean, as as a music fanatic and and a, these days a collector again. I can't really get into the idea of buying a second-hand T-shirt. It just doesn't do it for me. You know mm. what I mean? I just, especially not for those sort of figures. I mean, what are you going to do with it? I mean, wear it maybe, but and I, yeah. I, I, it doesn't. I don't get it. My biggest, my biggest T-shirt sale was, funnily enough, a Dolly Parton one, um, and it was. It, it was about two years ago. I picked it up for no more than five dollars. But it was about Dolly Parton did a tour of Australia, and the the on the front of the T-shirt it was basically Dolly Parton as a, as a like you know imagine these ro rodeo people you know on the back of a, a horse, but she was on the back this caricature. She was on the back of a kangaroo, and okay. it was the Australia tour, and. I listed it, and I think I listed it for something like $125. Can't be sure. Uh, and this guy contacted me and said, hi, would you consider selling it to me? I live in California. Uh, and I didn't have it on worldwide shipping. So I says, mm, I checked his feedback out, etc. And he sent me this other message. He says, you know, I'll pay straight away. Um, I'll be the only one with this T-shirt in my community. A very big Dolly Parton fan. Um, never got to see the tour in Australia for obvious reasons. Blah, 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 blah. So I said, yeah, okay. So I sold it. Anyway, it arrived. And he sent me this message. And he said, thank you so much for allowing me to buy this T-shirt. I'm the envy of all my friends. Now, friends, this our community. I'm like, oh, okay, Dolly Parton. I know she, you know, I'm, I'm not homophobic by any means. And I'm kind of thinking, you know, this is where it's heading. Sent me, he says, I've enclosed a photograph of me and my, him wearing this T-shirt. And his friends are like really like, you know, oh, so envious of this guy because he's got this, you know. And it was just your, your archetypal, you know, image. Think of Freddie Mercury, that's all I'll say. Okay. And, uh, but I was so happy. I mean, I was happy with my money, but I was really happy that it, you just say, no, you don't see why anyone would buy a T-shirt. Mm. But this guy mm. was like, it, it was his, he had to have it. He couldn't get it. He had to have it. I was so happy that he actually, you know, someone got it who really, really wanted it. And to this day, he's probably still wearing it now, you know. Um, so I, I, I do get it as to why people would buy certain certain items of clothing would i probably not i wouldn't you know be bothered about buying a specific t-shirt a big part of what we do is is removing our opinion out of the whole equation anyway because mm. you know a, a big majority of the stuff i sell I, I don't see any real value in it you know a lot of the collectible mm. stuff that isn't my thing you just think what is this tat and it sells yeah, yeah. Uh, we were talking about those those Disney plushes that I'm going to get thirty pounds each on, and it's just like it's not. Oh. It really is, you know. Well, a few Although, weeks ago, I bought. I can actually see the the kind of collectability, and I kind of can see the sort of the value in them. But some of the stuff we have is just. <laughs> but you don't have to appreciate it yourself. Is the point I'm making? You know what I mean? It, it's if somebody else thinks it's worth fifty quid, then yeah, to him, you know. Pleasant Valley picker there. He's, he's just saying, um, you know, never knew Dolly was a, a, a gay icon. But apparently so. And that conveniently brings us to this album. Now. <laughs> Cliff. Yes. I like Cliff. I, I'm sorry. I'll admit it. I'll put it out there. I like Cliff. You know. Um, Do you think he's in the closet? Is that what you're getting at? Well, it's been it's like it must be like Narnia's then because it's been very well hidden over the years. But I do believe once Sir Cliff uh, 
sheds his mortal coils. I do believe there will be an enormous amount of bad news come out about him. I do. I just think people are waiting for him to before they actually commit themselves. I don't know. I just how can anyone be that nice for that long? Is what I'm saying. There's got to be some. Um, there's got to be some discrepancy in. I mean, how old is he? What is he? Seventy? He's in his seventies now. Is he? I mean, he's, he's the only guy to have ever had a hit in five consecutive decades—a number one hit, isn't he? You know. He, what are you saying? He's got skeletons in his closet. That's all going to come out. I, I do believe so. Yeah. I hope not, because I do like I do like Cliff Richard. Oh, not enough to keep his album. So but, you've now put him on on the Hurry Up and Die list, have you? Because you've got one of his albums. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if this is like Room One Hundred One, isn't it? I don't know whether I can put Cliff in the room. <laughs> oh no, leave Cliff out. He... Yeah, no, I don't how know. Can you? How can you <laughs> put him in? Don't don't let Andrea hear, hear you uh, talking ill of the man. She she's a big Cliff fan. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I am. You know. But uh, I just yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> I bought a lion three weeks ago. Um, talking about Disney. Um, right. Oh. I've never seen the Lion King. You know, don't want to either, but. Oh, it's a good film. You know, I, I, yeah, Elton John puts me off it. This apparently is a character from The Lion King. That's Sim Simba. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's it's genuine Disney. Yeah. Now, apparently, if you press this button, it it, it says various phrases out of the film. What it says, um, I, I don't think its mouth moves. Um, it just seems to say these things, but it's when I first got it, I think I got it about three weeks ago. When I first got it, um, it, it I played it and it kind of reminded me of that Only Fools and Horses episode where he bought all the Chinese speaking dolls, um, and he's trying to repair them at his kitchen table because it just sounds so messed up. Um, I can't even decipher anything it's saying. Um, anyway, the other night, inspired by watching uh, Peter wrestle with a Billy the Bass and and repair this fish, uh, have you, did you see his live stream? No. Uh, it, it, it was actually was riveting viewing. It was one of them you couldn't tear yourself away from him just because you wanted to see him achieve it. Um, he repaired a singing Billy the Bass fish. And he, he, he took off the skin and everything and stripped it down to the bare bones. So I thought I might, inspired by Peter's video, I might actually attempt to do something similar with this and see if I can get it working properly. But have I've, you I've had a look? And I was going to say, if is it just not speaking? It's just garbled, is it? Garbled noises? Um, or... Well, I'll see. Uh, I don't know if there's any batteries in it. Hang on. Because I was going to say, it sound it could be just that the batteries don't have enough power. Because sometimes before they die, it just comes oh. out all glitchy and weird. It could just be a change the batteries job. Put fresh ones okay. in. Okay. Um, yeah, there's no batteries in it at the moment. I took them out so they wouldn't leak. I don't know why. It's, I kind of valued it worthless. But this thing was going for $50 on eBay over here. Not surprised. And, uh, yeah. It, I've never really dealt with uh, plush. You know, that, I know Carboot Chris does a lot of plush. Uh, he seems to put a lot of videos out with, uh, you know, he does plushes. Yeah. But I, I've never really entertained it. Uh, they seem to take up an awful lot of room for what you get. Caroline used to do a lot with plushes, didn't she? She'd always have this big bin liner full of them on her. On our uh, streams. Yeah, well, they'd buy bulk at auction, wouldn't they? Mm. Yeah, we've, we've always done well with plush. Um, kind of a little bit got to know what you're looking for, like anything. But, yeah, there's always surprises me. I was pleasantly surprised with those 
those ones we had last week. I can't help you with your plumbing, uh, PVA. Sorry. Uh, Richard Simmons. Uh, that name rings a bell. Was he? A, he was a. Was he a fitness and like get get healthier guy? Um, I I don't he, know. Yeah, this the, the I know he was. He was. Uh, he's talking about Richard Simmons and the gay icon. I know he was, but if it's the guy I'm thinking of, he had real mad curly hair, I think. Uh, a bit over the top. But I'm sure he did fitness and dance videos and things like that. Um, I'm not sure. He's he's dead now. I think he got... Did he get knocked, knocked over by a car or something? I've I've no idea. <laughs> I don't know who the guy is. <laughs> oh, you'd, you'd, well, you'd never forget him if you saw him. But yeah, I know what you mean. Right, I'm going to submit this one, and then my my stack is listed. All of that. It's not bad. Wow. Not bad. Yeah, that's it. Uh, TV fitness star, yeah. Oh, okay. Not not Mr. Motivator then. No, no, he I saw he, he was called Derek, wasn't he? I saw a picture of um <laughs> see. Derek, uh, Mr. Motivator, about he was in an award show. It's he's still a, a healthy, fit looking bloke. I tell you who else is as well on YouTube. Someone put a video up last night, Frank Bruno. He was he was um being videoed, just trying to keep fit in lockdown, you know, on the punch bag. Still a big bloke. Still, you know, well-toned. And, and I don't know how old Frank is now. He must be in his late 50s. Oh, and some, surely. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He was at his peak boxing in the 80s and 90s, wasn't he? So, yeah. 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 Oh, I'll Google it. Hang on, I'll ask Siri. Hey, Siri. How old is Frank Bruno? California, Bowling Green, Fortuna Turing, or Texas Tech? What? California, Bowling Green, Shush. Fortuna Turing. What are you talking about? Hey, Siri. <laughs> hey, Siri. He's 58, oh. apparently. How old? Oh, we've already found out. How? Oh, it's listening to me. Oh, now it, oh look. It's no wonder you're confusing the damn thing. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Try again. Forget it, Siri. You're too slow. Well, what was it even telling you? I don't know. <laughs> right. Well, that's that stack done. Yeah, I don't think any of these albums in this pile are going to bring, bring me vast rewards. I'm going to have a rummage in some grab of another. I'll just grab another pile and have a flip through there. There was loads of um, stalls at this, at the uh, particularly the second yard sale trail we went to that were just giving all their stuff away. Like fairly early on in the day, they just decided I've had enough. They just put little signs yeah. up, help yourself. Um, well, you did. <laughs> that was one of the things we picked up for nothing. And it looks, it's, it's only a PS1 dance map. I've got the game with it as well. Okay. But it looks it's fairly new, doesn't it? It doesn't look like it's been out of the box. Used maybe once one Christmas or something, you know. Look at that. It won't be a great deal. No, that's, that, I'd say that's never been used because everyone in the chat knows as soon as you take something out of a box from China, there's no way you can get it back in that box. Don't tell like, me that. 
There's no way you can do it, mate. <laughs> like um, well, paddling pools and yeah. I reckon it go back in because it, it's out out of its ah. bag. But I can put it back in its bag. Yeah, it's it's, it's got a manual. <laughs> so yeah, and that was free. Yeah, that with the software, which I don't know where it is because it's vanished. Um, we went to another store and there was all sorts of stuff. We got like loads of Skylanders figures and another store. There was loads of um, hardback Terry Pratchett books. And... Yeah. There you go. Have you got this one in your Genesis pile there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, not a fan of Genesis. Is that, uh, it's just called Genesis, that, isn't it? It is, yeah. I think. Ah. Oh, look. Oh, hello. Mm. <laughs> well, yours is shiny. Mine's dull. Yeah, mine's got a shine. Oh, is it? Yours is a matte finish. Yeah. Huh. Has yours got the song thing on the inside? Hold on. Hang on. Let me put my record box down. I feel like it's going to fall off my lap. I'll tell you what, though, condition is just, whoa, crazy good. We have. Oh, yeah. Your center's different to mine as well. Oh, this is a WH Smith inner. That's weird. No, they might have just put that one in. You know, uh, the, the owner may have lost it and found one and just banged that in. Yeah. Oh, this is actually an inner. So what they've done is, yeah, they've for some reason. Because is your is your yellow bit the actual inner? No, it's just a piece of paper. Oh, okay. So that's a very different issue then. Yeah, that is that's the sleeve on mine. All right. So quite why they've done that, I don't know. What year is yours? Eighty three. Yeah, eighty three. Is it on Vertigo? Virgin. Oh, Virgin Charisma. Yeah, yeah. VN mode saying UK Australia pressings, perhaps. Oh yeah, this. Oh, hang on. I'm pretty sure it's not worth a great deal, but um, no, I may not. be doing bundles with with mine. There's so many Genesis in here. Well, that's what I was doing with a few of the other albums I had. I was trying to. Offload them all as a job lot. Is that one of you lot again? Just sold uh, Michael Jackson's singles collection. Nice gatefold, three sides live. See, I think I may do some of these individually because the condition, I'll be able to ask, you know, the top dollar on them because they're, they've been so well looked after. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Home taping is killing music. Oh. <laughs> I will, um, if Dawn is in, Dawn, I'll, I'll get back to you. Um, I'll put them all to one side for you. Oh, look at this one. What's that? Have you got I'll a take it out of the plastic? All your, all your Des O'Connors, is that what Dawn wants? All... Yeah, she wants every Des now. <laughs> no, she's um, interested in the children's ones. Might be for a, a granddaughter's or grandchildren, should say. I showed you that one earlier, didn't I? Yeah. There was that... millions and billions of them made, weren't there? Yeah. In her prime, look at her. Oh. Mm. The face. I mean, this is late 70s, though, isn't it? This has got to be. I wasn't really into music by that point. I mean, I was still a, I was still a wee youngster. It's got to be 78, 79, surely. 78. Well, look at this one. I took it out of the plastic sleeve because of the glare. <laughs> Sex Pistols. Oh, Rock and Roll Swindle. Oh. Yeah. I've not. 
I mean, that's not the normal cover, is it, for that? No, it's the, no. I've, I, I, I do already know this was in the pile, so I'm not as surprised as I probably made as myself to look. But, oh, it's got a big dint there on the cover. Um, no, it's not the normal cover. And when I've looked at all the other ones, it's it's been like, I'm, what cover was it? Yeah, I can't picture it now. It's more, it's a simpler cover. There's not as much going on on it. No, and and I, I've tried. To, I won't turn it round because there's obviously there's the stuff on the back which might affect you know your stream. Um, but um, yeah, I'm going to have to look now. I'm going to have to look. Has it got a barcode? <laughs> Silly question, wasn't it? Um, the great rock and roll swindle. LP. Yeah, this this is the one you're referring to. That's the cover. Yes, that's the one yeah, I know. This, this is completely different. Uh, and I can't, I have tried looking for this before, and I just can't find any, anything like it. So, I say I you've, got, you've got some money there, because um, Sex Pistols are really collected, still incredibly yeah. popular. That's I mean, I I didn't I didn't like them. I just they couldn't stand them. But oh, I've sold that. Um, you know that um, Debbie Harry once more into the bleach. Oh, I've oh, I've, yeah. I've misspelt the title on it as well. I've put once more into the beach. <laughs> one of you lot who's just bought that as well. <laughs> Thank you if it was one of you. But, yeah, I've just noticed as the sales come in, I've, I've, I've misspelt the title because I was thinking of the actual phrase that she was dripping off. Yep. <laughs> no, that's that's not even beach. That's breach. Breach wants more into the breach, young yeah, man. Yeah, so I've not, even, that, I've not yeah. even got that right. <laughs> ah, VN Mold is saying if it's V12168, yeah, it's, it's V216. So it's the Australian pressing. Oh, okay. Um, well, I suppose it depends how many it sold then down there as to how rare it yeah. was. But um, why would they change the the design? Don't know. But it, it will make it more sought after. Uh, yeah, PVP saying look out for Zeppelin, Stones, Beatles. Those are the real money. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm actually in the house because I took it out of the shed. But in amongst all this lot was the Beatles White album. And do you remember that live stream he did with Ken a while ago where Ken shown you the, the Beatles White album that he had? Um, yeah, I've, I've got the same one, but mine's got the full fold-out poster and um, the uh, the four A4 kind of oversized picture postcards of uh, ooh, Genesis. Yeah, have you listed the White album yet then? No, it's still sat on. In fact, I've only just remembered we're going through this now where it is. Um, I went into the house with it, and Trish kind of said to me, Stop bringing stuff in the house. Um, so I, I just stuck it on top of this cupboard so she wouldn't see it because she's only five foot three and she wouldn't see it. And um, yeah, it's still there. So I have to. But PVA is just saying he used to have this. Sex Pistols album, put it on an auction with a high bite now if you can't find it on that. Maybe a promo. Um, no, it was according to VN, it's an Australian one off with um, put it on it to, Yeah, I, I, I grabbed this because Thomas was saying that Invisible Touch was his favourite. Oh yeah. We're talking later. Because I've got all of the early Peter Gabriel stuff that I think will have a bit yeah. more value. I mean, by this point, they were they were massive massive mega stars weren't they i mean god knows how many millions this sold but again the, yeah. the condition for an original not a, a reissue 
it, yeah. it, it's pretty mint fresh. So there'll still be a bit of value in it. But somebody, yeah, yeah. I think it was PVP, was just saying um, Blondie's first album. Is this their first album? You're talking about Paolo Lines? Uh, on the private stock label is about $50. I think this is on, um, yeah, Chrysalis. So, yeah, nothing special there, I don't think. Commoners Muck. Uh, oh, is that what you read? I used to have that pistol. Yeah. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Sold last month on Discogs, $35. All oh, right. I don't know which one we're talking about, whether that's your one you've got there. Now, I've got a box oh, with about another hundred odd in but i'm not i'm not going to grab that that'll be for another live stream i think i've not even been through it all yet i picked out a load of stuff and then i just made her a cheeky offer on the lot and uh i bought her whole collection talking of abba earlier on ah what album is that called i can't remember what they're called that um waterloo oh right okay oh it's three of them three abba albums this is just ABBA. I mean, ABBA were massive in Australia. They were, fact, they were massive it, most places, weren't they? I mean, they yeah, were phenomenal. It, it, was, it was thanks to Australia, ABBA got where they were because they were basically ready for giving up and then did a, a tour of Australia and just hit it big time over here. So it's down to uh, literally down so they, that that's what they've said not me <laughs> that's what the australians say and they're sticking to it <laughs> well that's what abba said in an interview they said it was oh, right their success is down to australia taking them on board and welcoming them and just you know uh, and ring ring oh i didn't know that was an out that was a single wasn't it ring ring i thought yeah yeah so, yeah, I, I know of the butcher block cover. That's the one where they had a, a they were all in like butcher's white outfits with, with, with lumps of meat and also like babies, like dolls. It's a really weird cover, like <laughs> dolls without arms and legs and then lumps of meat on them. And they were holding cleavers. It was a weird decision. Then they pulled the cover quickly, but a few got, got out to retail. I think that's the one you're referring to. Some of these are really dusty. Well, they're getting into the country and western now, so these might be headed down down south towards Mel. Mel likes the country and western. I bet Mel hasn't even got a record player, Rod. No, she hasn't. I think I've tried, already tried offering them to her. Yeah. Good I God. tried to educate her about Depeche Mode, and she just didn't even know them, who they were. No. no, she's a heathen. <laughs> oh, now we're talking. I've got Chaz and Dave on it and that sort of stuff. I was just, right. I was just going to say the other day, I had to go to the hospital with my son because he is getting a, an operation on his knee. So we had to go and have an assessment. And um, on the way home, I, I was driving his car because his knee was aching. So he said, You drive. So we was in the the area we was in. I've not been down in any op shops, charity shops, for a while. So while I had control of the car, I thought, "Oh, great!" So I pulled into a few, much to his disgust, because he hates them. Um, anyhow, on the way home, he decides to Bluetooth his radio, his stereo, to his phone, and uh, he starts playing. Oh, I can't even begin to describe who they were. It was rubbish, just all this rap music. So I threatened to pull over, and if he didn't play a song, we could both agree on. And the only thing we could compromise was on uh, the sideboard song, Chaz and Dave. So The sideboard song? Right, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll probably know it if I heard it, but... I'm not going to sing it, because it's like... Well, I, I sang it all the way home, and, and, and it's one of them songs, once you sing it, it's in your head. And, and I... 
I started just singing it at night and everyone was getting real fed up of it. But it, I just started referring things to it. And if, if Trish should say, pass me the salt, the song goes, it's like a that kind of thing, right? So Trish should say at night when we was having our tea, you pass me the salt and we go, here's the salt, here's the salt, enjoy your tea. And, then, then, <laughs> and it was just random nonsense coming out. And I, and I, I was glad morning came because I'd forgotten about it. But um, there's a video on YouTube of these, um, I think they're Muslims, and they're in their, wherever they worship. But there's a strange dance they do, and they all do it in synchronization. Right. And basically, they just, it's, they, I'm not going to do it, but when they're dancing, it's, what, it's they're just like, it's like they're dancing on hot coal. And their hands stay down at the side, and they're literally like this. Like that. And there's loads of them, all synchronized. It's, it's, it's fantastic to watch. But somebody put Chaz and Dave's sideboard song right. to the video. Yeah. And if you want a quick laugh, just just search for like, well, I don't know what you'd search for Chaz and Dave Muslims dancing or something like that. But um, yeah, it's, that's the old, that's the only song other than Rabbit. I can remember of Chaz and Dave's. Yes, Rabbit. Yeah. And and Snooker Loopy. Oh, God. <laughs> See, yeah. but you remember it, don't you? Yeah, because that was the TV show, wasn't it? Um, Pop Black. Uh, no, no, that was... My dad used to watch. I used to hate it. Me, on Saturday night when I was younger, I'd watch Match Jim of the Day, Day with my dad. Jim Davidson. No, the that big one. Yeah, that, that one was... Oh, Peter Ray's in, he'll remember it. Pop, um, pop no, that's what I said. Oh, anyway. Uh, pop Black was the one on a Saturday night where the, the, the professional snooker players used to play. Oh. Um, and it was on after Match of the Day because I used to watch Match of the Day with my dad and then when that came on, I used to go bed. I couldn't stand it. Oh, I'll ask, um, hold on, I'll ask Siri quick. Hey, yeah. Siri. Big break. Oh, <laughs> too late, Siri. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, PVP um, and Martin, PVP's gone. Yeah, their, their sense of humour um, was was way beyond what the record company and the general public can handle, mm. for sure. Yeah, the uh, um, yeah, sorry, uh, I'm just going to say that Chaz and Dave, they're the only ones. But now Snooker Loopy, on um, well, they they had a, a long career, didn't they? You know. And, uh, yeah, it was only a few years ago that we lost one or the other. I don't know which. Yeah, it was. Um, the, well, there was three of them, wasn't there? There was Chaz and Dave, and, and well, there was the drummer, but he kind of stayed in the background, which is what Phil Collins should have done. And it, it's yeah, he's. Um, I can't remember his name. I think the drummer was called Dave. Uh, I'm not making that up, by the way. Chaz and Dave and Dave. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, but um, I think the first one to die was the the bass player, the guy with the well, they both had beards, didn't they? The the yeah, anyway, the bass the taller, player, the taller, thinner one. Yeah, one, I think he other, died weirdly. Yeah, oh. yeah, I think he died first. Um, um, I think it's people have been tr having trouble with the app. So if you're having trouble, it, it's probably the app. Uh, it seems to be streaming fine from our end. Yeah. Oh, gee whiz. Gunfighter it's... Ballads with Marty Robbins. Oh, wow. Uh, when are you putting a rap album on, Rod? Pleasant Valley Picker thinks that's what you're doing next. Uh, the... <laughs> I keep saying it. They forgot to add the letter C to the beginning of rap. That's all it is. You said you have a lot of dusty albums. Do you mean dusty or slim dusty? I wish they were slim dusties. Yes, I'd be. I would be Havana cigars and fine wine all the way. Yeah. What's, what's slim dusty? What What am I missing he's, out? On? He's an Australian icon. He's He's dead now. Um, has been for a good few years. He was. He's like um one of these old um. Dawn's in, she'll correct me. Like a, a 
you call it a drover. You know, he was a, a real country man. He was, um, I think, the only song I can remember of his, and there's, there's thousands. I'm not particularly f fond of his music, but, you know, but um, was a pub with no beer. That's that's his the song I can remember. A pub with no beer. Yeah. Oh, the end. Mode just said it. Yeah, pub with no beer. Um. But he, yeah, I, I got about four years ago. We went to a garage sale, and my youngest at the time would be about fourteen. He picked up a double DVD of the Slim Dusty concert, and he paid a dollar for it. And um. I, it's the only time I've nearly had a fight with a 14 year old at my age because I couldn't get to it quick enough. Um, and I sold it for him on a Facebook selling group that night for $50. Um, yeah, he's very, very popular. Okay, never what have you got there. Uh, oh, where's your squirrel's head? I'm glad it's just his head that's missing and not his, um. We, we separated his head so it wouldn't jangle and break. We've got a squirrel teapot. That's a teapot? Tony Wood. Yeah. Well, Where's the handle? There's his spout. And I think you just give it a bit of that. Yeah, yeah but you pour in your fine, it's still grey. His head's going to fall off into your cup. Well, it's got a little catch, so... Mm. They've thought about everything, Rod. Don't you worry. I'm, I'm just having visions of this head falling off on live streaming now. But most of this in here came from a, a stall that was all freebies. Tur Turtle Beach headset. Well, they go for good money over here. My, my lad's got a set of Turtle Beach. Yeah. And then a whole box full of... Most of these won't have much money, but I bundle them up if they're not. These are um, Disney Infinities figures. Oh, yeah. And the old Skylanders. There must be 20 or 30 of them. And there's a load of the Lego ones as well, like the little portals and stuff, but it's all fallen apart. But, yeah, all of this was free. Crazy. Ooh, the fancy. You can't beat free. That Skylanders. I, I gave up on Skylanders. I spent the best part of three hours of my life a while ago placing them on the portal to see which character it was on the TV and writing it down on a piece of paper, then putting it in a bag. And then at the end of it, I'd forgotten which characters were which. And I'm like, I've just wasted three hours. I, I bought a huge bag of these Skylanders. I ended up just I think I sold them to someone on Facebook for whatever, just to get rid of the things. Yeah, most of them don't have much value. I thought you could just punch that number in. There's a tiny little model number. I don't know. I, I, my youngest at the time, he, he told me he, he had to sit it on this portal, and it, it used to the character used to come up, which was weird because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you can on some of them you can interchange body parts you can yeah. have like the head on some and it, it hold that sleep yeah you can mix and yeah. match but they've they've actually got a little connection so it will it will tell the computer what you've what combination yeah. you've got to leave but the name it throws out is is like i'm not sure is it a, an amalgamation of the two characters names i'm not sure I've, I've never played the game and I've never sold many of these. Usually I've, I've just done them in little bundles, to be honest. Yeah. Because most of them were sold in big numbers and nobody really cares. But there's just, just a few that are worth something. Oh, I've had a sale. Have you? Ooh. Yeah, don't get too excited. Yeah, I don't know if my last sale was a, a was a viewer as well that's watching now what was the last one i sold what have you sold 
Oh, just a DVD. I won't it, reveal it. Watching paint dry or something. Uh, some obscure thing. You know, you were talking before about your soundtrack um, earlier on. Yeah. Oh, this is a soundtrack album. Um. I don't remember. Does anyone in the chat ever? Oh my God! What's that? It's like some out of SpongeBob. He's he's from Inside Out. I think he's um, anger, isn't he? Anyway, it's all good fun. Does does anyone in the chat ever remember a TV show? I don't even know where it was. I'm assuming America because it's got featuring songs written by John Denver. Sunshine. Looks a bit like um, what was that one with Michael Landon? Oh, not not Little House on the Prairie. Um, where he had a get there was a guy with a beard in it. It was like heaven, something heaven. No, oh, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, does anyone remember? That's a, a soundtrack, original television soundtrack from Sunshine. I don't even remember. No PVPC. They thought about it. There's a little little hook bit that catches on the back of his neck. Uh, Genius. There you go. Coming to oh, Highway he, to Heaven. Um, Highway to Heaven. That was it. Michael oh, Landon. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a shame about him, wasn't it? When he he passed away. Was, uh... Hello, Mark. You're, you're catching a late one. I'm not normally streaming at 20. What time is it? 20 to 3. Yeah, everyone's having issues with the stream. I think is if, if you're on the app. Those that were watching on a, on a PC or desktop seem to be okay. Oh, my word. No. Yes, it is anger. Not Rod, the other one. Oh, quick, put it away. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. We all know what he did with it once he tied it down, don't we? Oh. Perhaps that could be a, a destruction video. <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you got a shotgun? Oh, I've never tried this banner thing. Where? How do? I, here we go. Banner. This is an example of a banner. Click on a banner to show it on screen. Ooh. Oh, I thought they scrolled along. They do when you put yours on. Oh. I think. Well, do you have to click scroll? Andrew's the best one to ask. Andrew um, Nolan. He's always putting them up lead with his. He's, he's begging ball out for money oh, on his pay. Oh, I was chatting with him. I said, yeah, I'll pop on and, and have a catch up with you, but you can take that stupid banner off if I'm coming on. I can't remember what it <laughs> said. I said, I'm not having my face above whatever you've got down there. <laughs> um, let me try if I can see if I can work this out. Um, if you are watching on the app, there may be issues. Scroll across bottom. Pardon? That's what it says. <laughs> Is it working? Is your text in black? Huh? I didn't have an option to change the text. All right. And I was just, you got to. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, there, there we go. Wow, check me out. There you go, see. And I found out from somebody, you, you can change your name while you're live. Oh. But, I didn't know that. Yeah, I wonder if I could... I've not done a live for a while, so I've... Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Hey! <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, see ya. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't. Oh. Do it now. Stuck. Oh no! There we go. I got it. I got it. <laughs> oh, so, in fun. today's, in, in in yeah, all the fun things to learn at two forty one a.m. says Leslie. <laughs> Um, now, do you, in today's heightened political agenda, do you reckon this needs to be? I have no chance of selling this, have I? I don't know if they've actually created rules around that, have they? I, I, I don't I, know. I, I, I mean, yeah, it's not right, is it? But it might get taken down. I don't know. Has anyone in the chat had any issues with, with that? Um, people, I mean, it was a big tradition back in there. When was that? 40s, 50s, and up and beyond. Yeah, I mean, the, the, do you remember the, there used to be a TV show in the UK as well, didn't it? In the 70s, what was that called? The, the Black and White Minstrel Show. Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, yeah, you're right. It was a big tradition but yeah looking back not not a very good one was it really um, snoopy versus the red baron <laughs> oh cool <laughs> got quite an eclectic range of stuff was this all from that one collection the same place yeah i mean there's a oh god what's this mickey mouse's disco oh now disney collectibles you might be onto something there all right. Is there anyone in the chat who can quickly look at that? Because my phone died. I've, I've stopped listening now, so I can have a look. All right. Okay. Do you want the actual album number? Hang on. What's it called first? Mickey Mouse Disco. Oh. Yeah. Mickey Mouse Disco. Vinyl. That should bring it up. It was actually manufactured in Australia, so it's not American Disney made over there kind of thing. No, it's not worth a lot. Well, oh, I don't know. Hold on. Let me I'll share the screen if I can. Oh, Peter's back. Peter Ray. He was talking about you about 10 minutes ago. So these are sold in the oh, dear. from Australia. Right. 13 quid. So that's 26, 27, isn't it? Honestly, whenever I'm looking up stuff and, and the results come in, the highest media prices are always in Australia. <laughs> yeah. I think it was that. It must be that supply and demand. You know, stuff at the time wasn't as readily available and now there's an audience waiting to, to get it. The, the demand, the supply isn't there. It's just... Yeah. Um, but I think if we just do completed, I think... A lot of it's just not selling over here. Look, you're going to scroll and scroll and scroll to find a sold one. There you go. So all of these were unsold. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Not not the greatest Disney collectible in the world ever then. Um, Peter wants to buy um, something off you. Pete, what? Pete, Peter, Peter, Ray. Peter Ray does that bandy follows enter Sikari. Sikari? Okay, yeah, you, you're welcome to it, Pete. I think it's listed. Is it? He's probably found it on the store. Yeah. Um, drop me a message if you want to sort something out. Yeah. Oh, I would have thought he'd have had that. He's, a, he's probably their biggest fan, isn't he? I assumed Pete would have had that. He's. I know he's seen them live a bunch of times. Maybe it's an addition he doesn't have. Anyway, so, yeah, sorry, your Disney one isn't that great then. What about this one then? Oh, okay. What? Robinson, Swiss Family Robinson, Disney, Disney again. All right. The bloody magpies back headbutting that bin. Is it really? <laughs> I think it'd have figured out by now. Yeah, I mean, that'd be different. Oh, that doesn't look promising, does it? Uh 
No. Well, they took an offer, something below 650. So what would it cost you to post a vinyl album in the UK? Uh, it would cost me just under three quid. Over the counter mm -hmm. in the post office, probably about four. Right. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's about similar. I mean, if I was to send that, I'd put it in that double walled cardboard on both sides and probably be under 500 grams. So it'd be about $7.50 ish <coughs> on my post or straight my, my business account. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just grab this last lot and I'm going to look up the teapot quick and then I'll think about wrapping up. Yeah. Tony Wood. This was one of Andrea's pickups. You probably realise she was into all of this stuff. I answer that, I'm on about 5%. Tony Wood teapot. We're all. No matches. Great. Oh, here you go. Look, you, what you want is Tony Wood Punch and Judy's dog. 23. I've got enough power to send her a message. Look at this. Look, the cats. Same make. The cats going at 15. Rabbit, only a tenner. Back at Chaz and Dave again, are you? Rabbit, rabbit. <laughs> Seven pound there, uh, but there's no squirrels. Oh, I've got the rare squirrel. You wait for it. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do, I'll show you the uh, therapy. We'll do a bit of that. Um, hang on, let me. Hi, Tracy. Oh, oh, I've got rid of the whole thing. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Look at old Jolson LP here. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was his name again? Tony Wood Squirrel. Oh, teapot. No results from a year's worth of data. Oh, dear. Doesn't Andrea do? I think that's a good thing. I reckon the squirrel is like, where is Rocking Horse? What's it? Doesn't Andrea do Etsy? Yeah. Would it not be something that might be best suited to Etsy? She'll cross list on there anyway. The Beatles ballads, what yeah. are they covers or, or their own? Is it a compilation of their own stuff? Well, I, I thought, oh, great. And then I saw 1980. It's basically just, yeah, Collect just covers. Was it covers or, or oh. a collection of? Well, collection, it says 20 original tracks. Oh, okay. So. You might be surprised then. I, I'll have a look. What's it? Uh, the. Let me come out of here. Beat. Uh, it's going to solds. I'll put it there in a, on my keeping pile in anticipation. There's other Beatles one here. Right, you're going to be you're going to be thrilled by this. It's just coming off my anticipation pile. <laughs> uh, yeah, not a lot in it. Oh well, let's see. They aimed a bit higher and got it at fifteen mm. quid. What if I lumped it with this one, the Essential Beatles? Oh, oh, look, it's getting better. Twenty twenty quid. When was that? 
why do people continue to do auctions when look this just 550 i mean yeah, they've been on top again but it's still less than half what they got and it's exactly the same cat number there look. yeah excellent condition here it's just it's just dark just put things on buy it now and name your price oh it's getting better 18.99 16 pound plus shipping so that's not terrible yeah. that one right it's headed back over <laughs> and look on bids one pound 90. stop doing that people yeah it's uh well actually don't because that's how i get my cheap stuff on ebay for my collection <laughs> <laughs> what was that other one you had beetles what oh the essential, the essential Beatles. Essential. Oh, there's one in Australia. There. It's on the Apple. It's on the Apple logo label. Yeah, another one there. Yeah, not really. You might be might be worth pairing them up, regardless, you know, because that one I'm yeah. worth messing about with. Wow, this is a, a Disney one. Oh, oh, now well, it's, it's gate it's gatefold, and it has a. Uh, hang on, my hair's getting in the way. It, uh, a booklet, a storyboard, a booklet inside. And this is called Stories from the Mouse Factory. I think there might have been a lot of them. Tracy, you'll probably have that when when you were younger, weren't you? Didn't you? Yeah. Oh, well, that's not bringing much up. All right. Do you want me to give you the album number? No, well, I... It, it would have come up under Vinyl Mouse Factory Disney, wouldn't it? Let me take out that. 1972. Oh, word. How old was it then? Four. Four years old. Okay, well, I don't know. I'm not finding that. Is that the cover you've got with a clock and... Oh, no. no. Oh, okay. Don't know. Hmm. Oh, I'll put it up there. You never know. Hmm. What great. What's this? I picked, you know, I've shown you those. Uh, hang on. Let me stop screen share a minute. Those uh, figures that I got a job lot for free. I got another big collection for a fiver as well. <laughs> well, that's Sky Skylander things. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't have bothered probably with the Skylanders for a, well, I might have done it for a fiver, depending on how many. But these are all the Disney Infinity, and mm. they're not great, but you know, five pound a figure sort of thing. And I'll, I'll lock them up if they're not worth a great deal. They tend to have a little bit more value than the uh Skylanders. That's uh, oh, Woody, Woody, but yeah. For the five, I'll always take a punt. There's a few that have been used and abused. She she's um gonna fly around and around in circles. Not ideal. Oh dear. He's, the wing off. he's not looking very threatening. Uh, my lightsaber is not working. I'm just yeah, I'm just, keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah. There's, there's certainly plenty of value in here from a fiver. Normally, when I've picked up bundles like this, you'll find the odd one or two that are worth a little bit. Sell them yeah. individually, and then the rest will be a couple of bundles. Just bundled they, up. They still sell, yeah. Um, Tracy. Oh. Um, I, oh, sorry. Is that I Captain America? Yeah, Captain America and Thor. The, the Marvel stuff I'll probably lot up. I think I saw Hawk, Hawkeye, maybe... Oh, there's Hulk as well. It's a big one. It's quite cool. Anyway, yeah, they're fun. Yeah, no, Tracy, I, I, I bought a job lot a few weeks ago of uh, 150 albums and 500 CDs, so I don't think all of these will be being listed. Some of them will be just like cannon fodder. But talking soundtracks, 
this is this is old. Oh no, it might not be. Kiss me, Kate. No, no, thank you, but my name's not Kate. Um, now I thought this would have been old, but then I saw there Andre Previn, or as Morecambe and Wise used to call him, Andrew Preview. Andrew Preview. <laughs> so it's probably similar era then you're talking Sorry. late 70s yeah. it's it, no it's a real heavy record this actually i thought at first it was one of them ones where you used to whack them and they'd shatter but it's not it's finest finest um plastic but it it's it's pretty heavy but it's in really good condition pity it's is what it is, you know. I mean, because I wouldn't have thought there's a, a, mass, a massive market for a vinyl LP soundtrack of Kiss Me Kate. I don't know, I'll have a quick look, but I'm not hoping. Howard, Howard Keel, he was, um, he was in, was he in Dallas with Dynasty, one of the two? Friends told me. Uh, I'm getting no results. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Oh God. Not. Mm. Well, now we're really getting into the dregs now. No, I don't think there's much demand for that one, unfortunately. I don't think there's a demand for the mandolins of Italy, is there? Oh, Tracy's in. Yeah, you can well, listen to junk. There we do on minute. Lots of crafters. Some people make things with records. Yeah, absolutely. We dabbled in that a while ago when we were doing craft fairs. But this is my last bundle of that pile, and I ain't even going over the other side. But look at this one. It's it, bear with me one minute. It's heavy. I'm a night owl. This is normal for me. It reminds me this of when we was in the UK and we wanted to redecorate the house and you go into the, the like the wallpaper shop. They'd have these books which you opened up, which would have samples of wallpaper and you'd flick through. This is this reminds me of that. A huge box. <coughs> Popular music that will live forever. Oh dear. Apparently, they were they were optimistic back in the day, weren't they? Um, what it even got a oh Reader's Digest. Oh, there we go. But it's um, yeah, rammed full with crap loads and old banger records. Nah. No, we're not. This, this is all in your imagination. No, I was asking if we're still live. No. <laughs> oh, now you've got to remember these, haven't you? The Seekers. Oh, yeah. And then there was the new Seekers. What was that all about? Yeah. Did, and a split well, up and Yeah. How original. Well, we'll split up. What should we call ourselves? How about the new Seekers? Yeah, I bet one of them went, you can't carry on because I've got the rights to the name. And they went, aha, we'll call ourselves the New Seekers. And he went, oh, yeah. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start rumours, Joanne. I am not a vampire. No, here we go. Uh, somebody, oh, who was it? it was C Pleasant Valley. Slim Dusty. Now, this is called Dusty Road, and it's all... Australian country and Western album. Uh, it's only got one song of Slim Dusty's on, but the rest are all, I don't know any of them, but famous Australian uh, country and Western singers. I might put that to one side. You never know. Harry Belafonte. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, t Tony's not impressed. He's uh, saying crap alert. I don't know. I don't know wh which one that was for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's not wrong. Well, this one. I thought this was uh, the Baron Knights at first. Oh yeah. 
Night of Dirty Dicks? What's that all about? <laughs> Is it old, like, medieval songs? That's what, no. It's all, um, with, with titles such as Nudge, Nudge, Wink, Wink, I don't think so. <laughs> it's a bit, bit more Chaz and Dave, then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, this, this really, she, she, she well hid these when I was looking. Ooh. Oh, Pete, you've bought it on eBay. I said, you... cheers, mate. Oh, cancel it. <laughs> we could have done, done a outside little deal, but yeah, that's cool. I will ship that out ASAP to you. There we go. The shadows. Oh, yeah. Here's a pop question for you. What was the shadows called before they were the shadows? And why did they have to change the name? Oh, bloody Kamal record. That, that's something you either know or you don't. And I, I, I've never heard this pop fact, so. <laughs> when they first started out, they were called the Drifters. And they put a record out and they got contacted by the rep for the drifters in america and they said you've got to quit and they, apparently they were you can tell i've just watched a documentary on them recently apparently they were um, wandering around wondering what to call themselves and um yeah one of the band members said well why don't we just call ourselves the shadows because we're always in cliff's shadow really? we're never at the front we're always in the shadow of cliff Well, this might be the one saving grace out of all this little pile I've dragged out. Oh, meatloaf. But how many of these used to were the made? Oh, Pete. I was never a fan. Just never a fan of him. It's fine. It's sealed. I've got a signed one opened. It made my night. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Appreciate that, Pete. What 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 is what? Dom? What's MCM Deco? Hold on, hold on. What people using the sleeves to put up? I'm assuming. Yeah, but what's the MCM? What's that an abbreviation of? Yeah, Dom, we we're not working out what MCM is. Is that not a record? Oh. Company? Trace has just answered. Oh, mid-century modern. Oh, right. Yeah. God, oh, sorry. As if we're going to know that. We're, we're so out of touch. You need, you need my wife to work that one out. <laughs> Susie Quattro. I used to Ooh, fancy her back in the day and all. Yeah, that's cool. Can they can? Put that to one side. What was Meatloaf's real name? Uh, ham Sandwich. <laughs> I've no idea. So I heard somewhere recently, I think it was on the radio. I don't know if they were just joking. You know, I popped in the car for five minutes and I caught the end of something, I think. And they were saying that Meatloaf's a vegetarian. And I don't know if they were just messing about or if that's a fact. No, I meat a Meatloaf is vegetarian or oh, Mr. Meatloaf. Mr. Meat or Mr. Loaf, as he likes to be called. I'm sorry you don't get like that eating salad. Well, he may have switched recently, you know, for health reasons. I don't know. I I literally got in the car and they were ending this discussion about someone had discovered that meatloaf was vegetarian. Can anyone mm -hmm. qualify that? <laughs> as we've, we've had his name confirmed anyway. Marvin Lee Aday. Oh. I've never heard that, you know. Oh, yeah, Tracy said the same. Marvin Lee a day. Another Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstadt, and Emmy Lou Harris. Cool, that's a party waiting to happen right there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Neil Diamond, hot August nights. Nice. That might go for a little bit, actually. Um, he recently put on YouTube, didn't he, a parody of um, Sweet Caroline. Um, for the COVID-19, it was like 
um, when it goes touching hands, reaching out, and he's like, "Don't touch out, don't reach out." And, you know. <laughs> Actually, when I saw that Neil Diamond popped up on my YouTube feed, I thought he'd passed away, and I, I went to look at my list, um, and then obviously I go to look if I had anything in stock. <laughs> But he you was just putting a parody off. out. You yeah, were there. I was in a cross. Hey, we, one's down. Apparently, he hates being called Mr. Life. It's all right. I doubt very much he's watching. I don't know. Oh, the amazing Spider Man. Oh, bit of a bit of Marvel vinyl. Meatloaf yeah. is. Look, Leslie, meatloaf is a vegan. See? Pop okay. facts. Well, better change his name then, hasn't he? Too late. 1974 that. Marvel Comics. Ooh, that sounds exciting. What's it? What's uh, so Marvel? Quite a long one. Power, Power Records presents The Adventures of the Amazing Spider-Man and Friends. Adventures Spider-Man and Friends. Friends. Well, it's Power Records. Yeah, I'm not putting all that in. <laughs> um, no. You never know, Tracy. Perhaps Mr. Meatloaf's got a lot of old crappy records. He's thinking of shifting, and he's thinking, oh, these two are discussing old crappy records. <laughs> and he's I, tuned in to watch. I can't, <laughs> I can't find your, uh, your Marvel. But Marvel stuff is, is so in, isn't it? They've had such a resurgence with all the films. And... Well, wasn't the guy who did most of the drawing, Spike... Oh, not Spike Lee. That was that actor on it. Um, what was he called? I know the guy's blooming name, and I all I've got in my head now is Spike Lee because you've said it. Pat, it, it was called something Lee, and and Stan Lee. Stan Lee. Because I thought when someone someone told me, oh yeah, Stan Lee, and I said Stan Lee who? He says no, that's his name. And I says yeah, but what's his surname? And he said Lee. And it's like Stan Lee, and I was like, oh, anyway. But he passed away a few years ago, didn't he? Was he the guy who did the, the drawings for Marvel? I'm not sure if he was Marvel or DC. It, it was certainly one of the pioneers for one or the other. Yeah. Oh, there we go, Johnny Fortecoats. Wow, still watching. Blimey, Johnny. Um, Stan <laughs> was the writer, editor. Um, we've got people commenting on Meatloaf. His new name is Nut Cutlet. <laughs> yeah, great singer in his day. Um, family of ours went to see him last time he toured, but probably going back, I don't know, pushing eight or nine years, I think. They went to see him, I think, at Wembley or Birmingham Arena, and he was apparently, he was awful. I think he'd yeah. lost. So it's a shame when they get like that and you think, Trish is Trish is watching at the moment. She's she was always a fan back in the day, and I'm pretty sure Tracy was uh, of um, not David Essex, the other one it was in the Partridge family. What was he called? In the Partridge. I think I love you. So that guy, David Cassidy. Oh, anyway. <laughs> she's she's been watching um a lot of documentaries about his life and how his life ended pretty sadly and um yeah she she um she the, the last couple of things she watched was comments on the videos saying oh yeah we were at that concert and it was rubbish you know you know sometimes artists still think they sound as good as they did back in the day and they actually they don't you know um there's very few that do. If Andrea runs off with meatloaf, it will all make sense now. <laughs> There's not much chance of that, I hope. She might be. She might 
off out the door like a bat out of hell. Oh, Joanne, <laughs> I've seen him in concert when he collapsed at Wembley. News to me. Well, well that must have been a few years ago then, because Wembley got knocked down, didn't it? Was it? Was well, it like no, it's, it? it's Wembley Arena. Which oh, like, oh, okay. Just next door, so it's probably that. I doubt he was well, playing the stadium. Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> Not a lot. Uh, we we, we were just wrapping it up about half hour ago. <laughs> yeah. just, I've only a few to go and then you can go. All right, um, so. it, here's one for ads. Ads are like this. The Philosopher's Album. Is he, is he still doing his... Um, he was going to university last I heard. Is he? I, I think. How's he doing? I think he still is. I'll, I'll be honest. I've not dipped into one of his chats for a while. Um, I, I did dip in one, and he was having a baby. On it. well, he was acting out having a baby on his bed. Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I. I it's, it, it was people were buying his ads cards or something it's like a c cards you can collect. Yeah. I don't really understand. Yeah, you, you, you can ask him a question, can't you? Yeah, or make him do weird things. It was it was quite bizarre. So that was the last time I caught up with that. Um, but I, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's still doing the university thing. I'm so oh, sure good. somebody will know in the chat. I think I think he's going to have a whale of a time. He needs to get get out there into the real world. I think and. Yeah, he definitely needs to. Uh, He's going to love it. Thing. Anyway, I was going to show you this quick as well. Oh, go on. Check this out. Is that Mario? That's Mario, but he's like wearing a black Yoshi suit with uh, like a, what do you call it? When you. A mortar board. Yeah, hat. Isn't that weird? I'd, I'd buy that for when he qualifies from university. He'll have the hat. He's got he's got his little degree there, look. Isn't that cool? Paid a pound for that. Wow. What's that worth? No idea. I'll have a look. Oh. <laughs> Tr Tracy said Ads was having sex tuplets, to be exact. Was he? Is that what was happening? <laughs> well, no wonder was, we hadn't seen him for a while. He's probably still trying to sit there. Sorry, I didn't know what I'd stumbled in on. Uh, Mario Yoshi Joanne Noble reckons it's a Japanese Mario. Um, well, on the label, it has Japanese writing. Um, so I think you're probably correct. Uh, Mario Yoshi, uh, Black. What did you? What's the name of that hat thing again? You said <coughs> a mortar board. M O R T A R. Let's see if that comes up. No. What plaster is used? The mortar board. You know. Mm. Flash. Um. Hmm. Well, just a black Yoshi. Oh, it's new though, so that doesn't really help. And it's in America. Uh, no, I'm not finding it. So I'm I'm probably going to shoot fairly high on that. I don't know. You what paid that, what a pound? Pound, pound for it? I'll, I'll probably look. For, I don't know. Put it on at twenty or thirty and see what happens. Uriah Heap. Oh yeah, you keep that to one side. That stay. I know the name, but I've never listened to him. Oh, there you go. You'll know this one. Oh wow, Floyd! Wish you were here. I was listening to that today. Is it a gatefold? Yes, it is. Mm. I cool. was never, never a big fan of Pink Floyd. I think what put me off Pink Floyd was um, the band in general. And that's going to sound a bit stupid. I, I watched a few interviews with Dave Gilmore, and 
they just came across as born with a silver spoon in America, spoiled brats from university who thought they were, you know, intellectually better than the people around them. That's the impression I got well, off. I can see where you're coming from, to be honest, but I think they had the music to back it up. You know, they thought they were bloody brilliant, but some people, including me, think they are. So, but they, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, it's really I, I like. I think also what put me off Pink Floyd was when they did. I mean, I've listened to a to a lot of early Floyd with Sid Barrett, and you know, like care, you know, careful. No, hang on. did they do careful with that act, Eugene? That was one thing. So anyway, yeah. Um, and then the Wall. I know Barrett was out of it then, but the Wall came along, and it was like. I don't like this. It was just, I just did not like it. It was, maybe it was overplayed on radio and pummeled at me. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, they had, a, they had that number one, didn't they? We don't need no education. I mean, that was so mainstream. But that wasn't really representative of them. No. Um, but yeah. yeah. No, but that album you've got is, is, it's, oh, yeah masterpiece for ages my favorite record of theirs was dark side of the moon but i it's been overtaken by that now that's what i go to if i think i'm going to play some floyd i play that my my mate um i've known him since i was like four year old um he's a big pink floyd fan um we, we, i actually went with him when we was in the uk there was a couple of tribute bands uh we went to watch funnily enough the australian doors they were brilliant and the Australian Pink Floyd, they were equally as good. Um, but I say he was a big Floyd fan. You know, he, he bought all, every, every album that came out, Division Bell. I remember going with him when he went to buy the Division Bell. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he was also a big Genesis fan who I equally despise as, as much as Floyd. Um, funnily enough, I'm, I probably told you this, but we actually we went on holiday to, I think it was in Kos in Greece, when we was about 24, we actually got into a, a full-on physical fight because of Phil Collins. Um, yeah, he, I took my stereo, you know, my, my, one of them raster blaster things, <coughs> and um, forgot to take some cassettes because it didn't have a CD player. And the only cassette he had was this, genesis one and and if i've heard i can't walk or whatever it was called once i've heard it a thousand times um just just annoying the hell out of me and we ended up having a fight over it yeah so so phil collins nearly broke up a friendship so that's another reason to hate him apparently quickly um, you are a heap salisbury is that the name of that one you had um, yes, it is. Yeah, which reckons that could be could be worth a bit. Okay, I was just got this out because um, sorry, I don't know his name. VNV mode. I'm just checking the code. He says asking if it's the, the that one. Two three four six five one. No, this says um, S. Yeah, it does. Sorry, I was looking at the one below it. Yeah, it is that code. It's SPB, BB, whatever. Yeah, it is that one. Um, and the last two off that pipe. Oh, here we go. Now we're talking. I'm just reading we're about always... Floyd. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Wish you were here and Dark Side of the Moon are up there for me. This is Thomas. I also enjoy the Floyd's later stuff. Momentary lapse of reason, reason is a great listen. I'll be honest, that's an album I've not explored. Uh, you mentioned Division Bell. I really enjoy that. But I'll have to pick that one up. Um, yeah. Okay. Cheers, Thomas. Oh, PBA saying that, Uriah. He just Could you quickly look that up, Dick, while you're on that? Uriah yeah. Heap, Salisbury. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I had another Uriah Heap one. It had a picture of a snake on the front. Oh, oh, where's that Floyd album? 
uh, VNB saying that Pink Floyd sold May 20th for 150. Some have a postcard. Oh, please have a postcard. Is that your um, right? Got a tank on the front. It has, yeah. Hang on, sorry. It has, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Are you sat down. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Um, well, it's going to be worth about three dollars, isn't it? Something like that. Uh, right. Is this is this payback for all them videos I sent you? <laughs> oh, there you go. That... Oh, oh yeah. But look at the one below. But that says 1971 UK first press. So, and, and then and then look. <laughs> it's literally tanked the bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was the hundred and three dollar one? Um, S. Well, it says six three six double o two eight. There, I don't know what that. How uh, that relates to yours, but I'm not that. I'm not that lucky. It's definitely not got the vertigo swirl. It's just this well, is on your, bronze. Is yours an Aussie one, or is that an import? And or what? Does it say made in Australia? Manufactured in Australia. Yeah, it's bronze. The, the logo's bronze. Sorry. So yours will be probably a bit different price-wise, maybe a lot rarer because it's not this UK one anyway. I'll have a look on Discogs later. Oh, it's called Paul VNP. You're asking for the catalogue number. Is that for the Uriah Heap one? Um, I'll, I'll say it anyway. Um, From the label? Yeah. <laughs> That's what that one says. Well, this says MX174275. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, that's one to uh, to look up, do a bit of research about. Yeah, because the this is bronze. Was it's saying here Albert in brackets? Now I'm pretty sure Albert was the record company that ACDC first signed up with or are still so i'm not sure but could be wrong there um right is there a postcard in here sorry i know dun, dun, dun. Oh! Oh! what what no there isn't what 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 oh is that the postcard? A bit crinkled on the end. That's because it's been wedged in there all them years. Yeah. A picture of them, just a, a lake with rocks. It, it, it's a bloke head first in oh, water. Right. Yeah, that's a famous image, isn't it? Well, look at the back, what it's got. Bro. Oh, it's all a bit. Wish you were here. Well, what do you send on a postcard? Wish you were here. Yeah, that's awesome. It's a shame it's all dog eared on the edge, but. Okay, so who was saying about a postcard then? Someone was uh, looking Paul. Ah, oh, there you go. SBP two three four six five one sold in May twenty for one hundred and fifty with a postcard. <gasps> Ooh, this just got excited. That's been wedged in there for probably right, yeah, best part of fifty years. Nineteen seventy five. So yeah, fifty years. Mm. <laughs> not, not far off, is it? Wow! Did yeah. I did I forget to mention? Oh, I've always liked Pink Floyd. <laughs> you you love Wish You Were Here. That's your favourite album, isn't it? Tell me about it. <laughs> well, there you go. That's made my night as well. Now I'm glad we we've been looking at these records. Now I'll just tell you these last two, and I'm done. Deep Purple in Rock. Nice. And one of my all-time favourite albums, Burn. There you go. Excellent. Well, so I paid 400 for all the cassette. I'm already about $250 on CD sales out of that lot, and there's a gazillion left to go. So definitely make some money. I mean, like we said earlier on, you've got to take the roughly the smooth. Um. So from the same lot, you you got cassettes and CDs and vinyl. No, sorry, there was no cassettes. There was just the vinyl. I mean, 
what I've shown you tonight is probably the same again on another pile. Um, and there's yeah, there's about 500 CDs. Um, but out, out of the CDs, I've probably listed about a hundred of them, and I've made so far in sales on them alone, including postage, around about 250 ish. Oh, hang on, he's adding. Oh no, he's adding more to this Pink Floyd requirements. Look, it also came with a poster. I don't think there's a poster inside. But that might not. Be, not. That might not be that issue though. Is that an Aussie one? Well, hang on. Oh, hang on. There's, <laughs> there's another. It's got another flap. No. Oh, there's that vintage paper smell. Yeah. Right. Um, this one is. Let's not lose this postcard. That's its. That's its provenance. Um, what was he asking? A black cellophane wrapper. No, it's clear. I always get a bin bag though and make some up. Oh, I think that was round round the outside of it anyway. That's what they're talking about. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Well, thank you, Paul, for that because literally, um, had I not known about even looking for that postcard, I'd have probably just put the album on on eBay, and then someone of us like yourself who who had that knowledge may have snapped it up. Reached inside and pulled out the postcard and been laughing the head off. Exactly. I'm just going to check before we go. Wish you were here. Postcard. Just see what comes up. Actually, that's going to bring up loads of other rubbish. Hang on. I've got to add Pink <laughs> Floyd. It's literally bringing up postcards with that on. Uh, Pink Floyd. Wish you were here. Postcard. Oh, just the postcard has sold for 11.50 here. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me share this, and then we will let you people. You should all be in bed anyway. Well, actually, not if you're in <laughs> Australia or more maybe America. All you British should be in bed anyway. Um, I am British. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, look, there's your. That's that's the same image, isn't it, on yours? Yeah, that's the one. So, eleven fifty is not bad for a postcard. Pink Ken Floyd. Chapman would be happy with that. <laughs> that that was the two, three, four, six, five, one from yeah. Australia. So that, yeah, best part of fifty quid there. Oh yeah, that's in pounds, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So double it for me. They're showing that record on the the one below the third the third one down as though it's going on the inside of the gatefold. They've just they've just laid it underneath. What do you mean? That, this one? Well, it's a gatefold album, so they fold, folded the album, you know, out. But it looks like it's been. It looks like away on the in sleeve. Then, look, this is two separate. No, hold on. How have they done that? That must be an inner that slid out. Now, didn't someone just say there was a poster as well? That might be the poster. Uh, that must be it then, because that's the front and back of the gatefold there. Look, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that one went for a lot less. Yeah. But see, Ooh. I think it's probably better in Australia. There's just less stuff down there, right? And and that's one the same thing in Australia. It's gone for higher. One hundred and fifty dollars pound. Oh. Oh, it's UK mint. first mint. Yeah, mine's, mine's none of them. 85. Uh, yeah. Number. But there you go. I mean, that that's a, an incredibly saleable item, whatever way you look at it, and I think you'll do well. Yeah. Now, bearing in mind what you said before about um, auction. Do you reckon an auction might be kind of a way to go with it? Or? I would 
I don't know. I'd get on therapy, can do research for Australia only and see see what mm. sort of values you get. It may have a clear sort of ceiling on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Pleasant Valley's saying Wish was not Gatesfold in Canada. Is that where Pleasant Valley's from, Canada? I, I thought with the CA and on the end it was California. Well, that could be Canada, surely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know, but I think I think probably. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Thomas, what are you doing? It's only us nutters like me that are still up. <laughs> I'm in Scotland and it's starting to get light. <laughs> not in Scotland. <laughs> I'll be honest. I I go to bed quite often as the sun comes up. <laughs> it's not it's not good. the um scotland i mean like i say my dad was from scotland we used to go visiting family up there and as soon as you got over past carlisle it had its own weather system scotland yeah strange it's either w wet or wet or <laughs> <laughs> well what, what are you dragging out now what the i don't know i was just looking i've forgotten what i've I bought so much in the last couple of weeks i've forgotten what i've got what, Just, what's that painting behind you there of a, of a head on the other side? Oh, the right side. oh, this, yeah, this was I that's my sister. I painted that when I was 16. Really, yeah, I framed it up for her birthday. I'm gonna give it to I her. Went, I thought he went to art school. <laughs> This is way be way beyond before university. Yeah, that was that's my sister when she was ten, I'm guessing. Wow. Is that she, watercolor? No, it's just gouache, just basic paints. Oh. But yeah. It's very good. It's um, I mean, obviously I don't know your sister or what she looks like, but it it is a very good it, it was drawing a good, painting. Yeah. And she doesn't know that I've still got it. And I didn't really know I still had it. I found um, a, a load of my old work that I didn't know I'd kept in the loft when yeah. I was in room to put all the shoes up there. Found that. And I thought, hopefully, she's going to be filled to bits with that. Because I had um, – this, this is a really old frame. I think it's 1920s or 30s. So right. it's a really, really nice is it teak or frame. And it, oh, I right. cut it down a little bit, but it worked just about right. So yeah, that's that's from my sister. So you you, you painted that when you were sixteen. Um, what happened in between there to your Boba Fett? <laughs> because it seems what? to have been a bit of a decline. But my Boba Fett came out as it was supposed to. Oh, I've still got the, it. Uh, the runner-up entry look. What, did, what I, did you expect it to look like? It looks like blooming Boba Fett. <laughs> it looks like a pair. It looks like a pair of your standard y front underpants. So, <laughs> I didn't have a lot to work with, to be fair. I I can't even show you the winning entry because uh, I no longer own it. In fact, Peter Ray's got it. So, oh yeah. Ooh, yeah, for some strange it, reason, he decided to buy it when Brad did a uh, an auction for the um, bushfire thing. So yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, he won a lot. He won. He actually won the book as well, but wouldn't pay the postage because it <laughs> it was too much postage from Australia to the UK. So he went out and and found the the same book. But actually, Peter was supposed to be doing some. Um, like a carry on of that over there. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. No. Okay. No, okay. That's... Well, I'm I'm going to go and make a cup of tea and get on with the rest of my day. I'm I'm not listing any of these. It's, uh, I'll carry on with my meditation. I might put one of meditation CDs on. Oh, don't you'll 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 be napping before you know it. That is very kind of you, Pleasant Valley. Um, I I left my whole art career behind because I had a a very troubled time in that part of my life, and I associate it all with with the uh, 
mental breakdown I had, shall we say, at art college. So I, I packed it all up in a suitcase and metaphorically walked away. So I haven't really painted since I was in my 20s. If uh, just a quick one before you go and, be, and before Pleasant Valley goes, like you, you've, you've done art and Pleasant Valley says he's got a BFA degree. So he knows a bit. Now, three years ago, I bought a painting, an oil painting. And the only reason I bought it was because one, it was signed and two, um, I'd seen this painting before. Um, and it was, it, it fetched quite a couple of hundred dollars. Now I had it framed. And um, apparently it's from the 60s, this painting. It's, it's just here. I'll just grab it and have your opinion on it. Because it is a known artist, but I can't for the life of me remember what he's, he was called. But I think his name was on the... Now the painting apparently is called Juliet. Um, that's it. Oh, hello. Yeah, now it's kind of like that late sixties kind of look, isn't it? You know, yeah. the my mum had um, a in that kind of style that she had in the sixties. I'll cover yeah. them up. <laughs> kind of almost, almost ghostly and uh, ethereal. Yeah. yeah. See, there's a, it is, there's a big market for that, I reckon. I quite like it. Somebody, I mean, it's I can't. Somebody Jones. Oh, I know this piece of Hang cards on. probably covering it. But, um, oh. I can't, but I it, can't get out. It's very, it is, it, it, it is very 60s, but it is a, an oil painting. But I, I know nothing about painting, but when I saw it, and, I, and the place I got this was from the tip shop. Quit feeling them up. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know what me and Juliet get up to in this shed, Jalissi. We can all imagine. Um, But I know nothing about art, and I paid, I think I paid about $10 for it at the tip shop, maybe 20 We'll go with 20 just to be safe. Um, I could have bought firewood for all I know. But I just quite like the look of it. Um, I have, I do know the artist. It's in here somewhere because I did do some research, and apparently it is genuine, uh, etc. It's got a, a slight bit of damage down the bottom. Um, but yeah, anyway. Uh, but with you talking about art, and then yeah. Pleasant Valley saying, well, well it's, uh, it's a named artist. Um, the guy is it a bloke? Did you say? No, it's a woman. No, the the artist. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, yes, it was a male, a male yeah. artist. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say he or she, but he has clearly got some talent, and and that sort of sixties kind of throwback style, I reckon, is is totally in. So I, I reckon you can't lose on that. Well, PVA says that. What's the artist's name now? <laughs> Zane has been to bed and woke up again since we've been on. <laughs> the, the last the last bit is Jones. Well that's gonna it's narrow it right up. down, isn't it? Jones. Well, not unless you don't live in Wales. But well, is the it? last bit Les. Jones. It? It's it kind of no, it's not Les Jones. It kind of looks like, but I don't think it is. It looks like lightning. It's Barry, not lightning. Barry L L Layton. That's it. That's Layton Jones. That's the one, yeah. Juliet, but let me write that down before I forget it again. Barry. <laughs> no, yeah, it's him. <clears throat> oh, um, yeah. I, Please be my pension. <laughs> if that's an original, <coughs> yeah, he probably did umpteen of them, didn't he? <laughs> How does well? Ah, uh, How does I'll... it end up in a shed in Queensland? 
because there's prints coming up. Oh, don't disappoint me now. You sure yours isn't a print? Yeah, it's not. It's paint. <coughs> it's definitely paint. You can feel the undulation of the oil. Is that is that the same image you've got there? That's that's it, yeah. Because if something's worth 42 quid as a print and you've but, got the original. Right, is that no. fringe? Hang on, is that a, what does yours look like again? Huh. That's that. So the, the, the paint of that in, in Merthyr Tidville that sold for 42 quid. Right, well, that paint, open his pictures up. Does it have a an image of the back of the picture? Yep. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait for it. Is it not just a print on, on canvas-like material? Because that looks like it's got a texture. No, I... Oh, I'm feeling very disappointed now because, right, now you you did art school and, and what did you generally paint on? Well, it would depend what we were using, what medium, but you'd paint on canvas if you were using oil. Right, that, that might be a bit of an issue. Um, You've got a print then, right? Would you have ever considered painting on hardboard? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, right. Well, that's what we've paint, got. You can paint on board. Generally, you're painting on canvas. Yeah. But it, it, it is a thing to paint on, on board. Yeah. Because this is... Hold it's on. Got, it's even... <laughs> this is hardboard, what you'd find in some 1970s kitchen drawer of a... Of a Right. Right. And, not canvas. and that's what the the paint is on then it's not a it's definitely painted onto that yeah how do you print onto Ooh, okay. you see, it, see it's got a bit here it, it's i don't know if you can see it sorry love down the down the bottom here can you see that little bit there yeah it's kind of like something's punctured it slightly and, and grazed the the, the thing, but when you when you you look at it, you can definitely see oil paint undulations of oil paint. It, it, yeah, I can see when it's catching in the light. You can see the different textures of the paint a bit as well. Yeah. So, well, if that if that's the original by a named artist that that's popular enough for a print to be selling in Wales for best part of what was it forty odd fifty pound. Forty pound. The original is going to have some value, isn't it? I. Uh, what's what's Pleasant Valley's real name? I, I, I can never remember. I can't names. PVA. That that's a glue in it. Oh. Yeah. Or oh, PVP. Sorry. Um, I didn't frame it. Um, bit of a backstory with it. When I went to the tip shop, oh, what um, when I went to the tip shop and bought it, this is eight years ago. They have some people there who, um, the the you know the, the they're not fully up to speed, and and but the the fantastic people they help out and it's great. When they was put in. The prices on it, they got some, um, you know, that white masking tape. And this is where the damage has come from. They put a piece on and then wrote on the price on the masking tape, right? So when he pulled the masking tape off, it brought a, a piece of the paint off with it. Now, there's, a, there's an artist in and around this area. She's an old dear. She's about 80-odd years old. But a very well respected artist or, you know, knows her stuff and she does teaching and this, that, and the other. And she repaired that little area with, she matched the, 
the paint and repair it. And she actually said to me that it, it was definitely not a print. She said it's 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 proper oil, oil paint. So I'm only going off what she said. Art, I know nothing about it. Absolutely nothing about it. <laughs> I just I just saw it. I quite like the look of it. It reminded me very much of something Austin Powers would have in his house, you know, hung up on the wall. Oh, you're sitting down. <laughs> All um, right. Okay, we've got I've I've put in original, but I don't okay. I don't know if these are they must be to be no, they can't be. Look, there's three of them for goodness sake. But these these this is the Barry Layton Jones. Yeah. Uh signed three nine five. So is that an original then? Oil. Mm. Well, I've just so, he, tea he, cakes. Has, tea cakes say, has just said it looks like a. I don't even know how you begin to pronounce that. Jai Klee on canvas catches out many who are not familiar. Maybe that's what it's done with me. But I didn't buy it for thinking. Oh, this this is an original. It's going to make me. I just liked it. Yeah. But while yeah. you just mentioned then about art, and then I saw. Pleasant Valley say he had a degree or something in, in art. I thought, oh, well, you know, ask. Well, it's it's certainly worth looking into a bit further. But, it, you know, clearly by those results, he's, he's internationally known. And even mm -hmm. in the print, your money's safe. And, you know, it was a good pickup. Yeah. And oh, if, well, if, if somehow it turns out to be the original that all the prints are taken from, that's got to be a significant piece of art, hasn't it? As it in, would be, but I, I would, I would probably, yeah. It, it, it ain't going to happen. That, that doesn't happen to me. <laughs> Excellent. Right, I'm going to have to go to bed. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for having me on. We went on a bit longer than what we probably thought. Bloody hell, four and a half hours. Oh, that's that's probably a channel record. Tracy, if, that would be hanging on your wall. If you want it, you can make us an offer, and I'll even come and hang it for you if you pay the airfare. <laughs> you can make me one of them, them, them recipes off your new channel. <laughs> uh, right, William, thank you, PVP. I, I will endeavour to remember that, but don't expect me to. <laughs> just be, can you just say I am, I am Batman? Oh, in the voice. I can't do voices. Hang on. We've got to say that Tracy's Batman. No, you've got to say you're Batman. I know. <laughs> I am Batman. <laughs> uh, you would see the individual brush strokes, brush strokes oh. on the Okay. Image. Okay. Well, I've got a lie to you. Let's have a it, it, yeah, it won't all be a, a level thing. There should be build-ups of oil paint in certain bits. See, I, it's right, it's on hardboard, yeah? But mm. there does look like underneath some kind of... You know, like when you do a car repair, you know you do body filler on a car and you put that glass fibre matting on? It does kind of have that finish underneath. I've never seen that finish on hardboard. Hardboard's generally been like that on the back and smooth on the top. So is it canvas that's been glued down to the hardboard? I don't know. Someone's going to have to have a proper look at it, aren't they? Yeah, I, I would, when you get a chance, take it to uh, a dealer, literally that. Yeah. Walk in and say, what's this? How much are you giving me for it? <laughs> And then don't sell it to him. <laughs> okay, exactly that. Yeah, get it appraised. That's what. I, that's the yeah. word I was looking for. Get it appraised. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank All you. Right. So Somehow we we've, we've remained with viewers until the bitter end. Look, we've still got thirty eight crazy people watching us. Um, <laughs> thanks for hanging out, Rod. I no had no. Worries. I had no intention of going live tonight, but I'm kind of glad I did. That was fun. <laughs> I, I still listed my pile of CDs, so I'm quite I'm quite happy. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, that's that's right. a pleasure, Johnny. And thanks for the the purchase. That was awesome. Um, yeah, I'll get those shipped out to you as soon as possible. Oh, that doesn't sound good. He's comics. Mm. Oh, confirming that every single issue in a st big stack of comics is completely worthless. Oh, that's yeah, disappointing when you don't find a gem in a in a, in a stack. So thanks, yeah. uh, these stalwarts that have been with us for hours. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy people thanks Zane take it easy thank you uh, Pleasant Valley for putting yeah, with for that that's um, yep. food for thought anyway food right thought. So okay thank you very much get listing vinyl Rod you've got plenty to be going on with there I've certainly got one anyway yeah <laughs> alright thanks everyone yeah. see you see then you. bye <laughs>